Hello, welcome to episode 12 of An Airful Podcast. This episode we speak to the fantastic Emma Campbell. She's a singer-songwriter, YouTuber and former front woman for Trapped in Autumn. We talk all things Trapped in Autumn, some of our memories and experiences of being in the band, including Neil the Fox. Then we talk horror movies before we get all spooky and get into things paranormal, including Emma's first Ouija board experience. We also have a surprise special guest at one point where it scares the shit out of me mainly <laughs> uh, and the rest of you a little, um, but you'll find out who that is later on in the episode. Don't forget, you can follow us and support the podcast at An Earful Podcast, and don't forget to follow Emma after this. Emmy Campbell. Emmy Campbell. There it is. That's the one. What did we all think of this one? I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed this one. It was just nice seeing Emma. Yeah, it's been... A while, hasn't it? Too long. I think this was a special one because it was the first time we'd all sat together in a room, like since being in the band. Yeah. All three of, well, all four of us being in the band together and actually just talked about our experiences of being in, trapped in autumn and, you know what I mean? And just, yeah. Yeah, I think it was nice and refreshing. Um, yeah. We'll definitely have Emma on again at some point when she wants to. Yeah. Um, and probably with the ideas that we discussed in this podcast. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, you'll find out. Oh, God. Very soon. But otherwise than that, enjoy. Thanks. Thank you. You googled what? My net worth. Just someone posted it on Twitter, like their net worth, and I was like, wow, I wonder how much I'm worth. Because they were just like... I don't think they do much other than like Instagram. So I was like, well, how much am I worth? Because I used to do bits on YouTube, so get me that money. I went on it and it said, I'm worth $2 million. But I'm oh, fucking great. skin. I'm really poor. <laughs> <laughs> I've got no money. Like He calculates this from your YouTube, like whatever yeah, your YouTube like it, stats are and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, it must work out from like stuff like that. And it was like, it had like a description. It was like, Northwest of England YouTube star. And I was like, Neat, thank you. Right. <laughs> and I said, I'm most known for my covers in my own idiosyncratic style. I can't say that word. <laughs> who, who actually comes up with this? Who writes that? Fort knows, but apparently they think I'm worth $2 million, so like, thanks. Shows the money. But yeah, literally, <laughs> money, where's money, 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 my money? money. <laughs> I need to find who wrote it and be like, look. I appreciate it, but can you PayPal me some money? Yeah. You owe me two. I million. cannot afford a Mackey's. And I would really you owe like me the one. deficit of such a <laughs> yeah. Lewis Capaldi did this on Snapchat and uh, it says his net worth something like millions. And he goes, if the tax man sees that, I'm fucked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally, I don't earn enough to pay tax. But if they see that I'm worth two million quid, I'm getting a knock on the door. Like, you owe us something right now. <laughs> There's some amount of money that you owe us. And I've got none to give. Because I've got nothing. Oh, nothing in the bank. Jesus, she's got it all stashed in offshore bank accounts. <laughs> yeah. The secret Briefcase is just like, shit, shit. It's just like, oh no. I've been rumbled. <laughs> by idlenetworth.com. <laughs> They're going to get me. Oh, oh my shit. God. Oh. Well, thanks for coming on. It's okay. This has been like... In the long run, aren't it? Yeah, it's very long been run. many, many years. Same years very long run. Yeah. We're only on episode 12. So. Yeah, <laughs> but still, like, the past few months, we were, like, the first people that we said we'd get on this was just like, shit, we should get them on this. Yeah. Well, we've not actually all met up, especially all us, with us being in, trapped in autumn. Yeah. We never met up within that, like, four years properly and actually had a good chat like this, so it's yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, like, we hardly even asked you. asked you. We were like, when are you coming on the podcast? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> just by, by the way, yeah. when are you doing yeah. this? <laughs> Like, I don't have any hobbies, so <laughs> it's all good. I <laughs> don't do anything. We're okay to assume it. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, isn't this like the first time since Traps and Arm, like us four have probably been in the room together? Yeah, yeah probably, I think yeah. so. Four yeah. year Trapped and Arm meetup. Oh. Oh. Reunion. At the end Reunion. of the podcast, we're going to play a quick segment of It's going to be Lungs. <laughs> I actually consider bringing my acoustic and I thought, no, that's a douche move. I will not allow it. <laughs> Just an ambush, get me in a room. <laughs> Sing now. Sing it. Like, you know, you would yeah. Do it. Do, Do it, it now. Do it now. Lock the door, like, until you sing. You're not going home. <laughs> Trapped <Mike>. in Wigan. <laughs> <laughs> the oh. rebirth. Oh, Jesus Christ, there's like another Joseph Fritzl still there. <laughs> <laughs> There's no windows in here to begin with. 
to black walls. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> God dark. <laughs> so that would have been what? Four Sorry. years ago? Uh, yeah. yeah, we were talking about this in the car, weren't we? Yeah, it is four about years. That's four years. weird. Because that feels like, what? I know, I hate who so. I was four years ago, and I hate who I am now. So <laughs> I've only got changed. worse as a person. <laughs> <laughs> I've not grown. <laughs> I've not progressed, I've <laughs> declined. Yeah, I have. So. I've gone downhill as a person. I hit 18 and it was just like, <laughs> straight down. <laughs> and I'm only going lower. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're just winging this. Part yeah, yeah. Now, really. just a big wing. We may as well just admit it right now. So, what? This would have been like what four years ago then. So, do you remember when we started doing Traps Not With You? Because obviously we finished doing the second EP, and it was pretty much like a quick turnaround. So, do you kind of remember what it was like? to them because it was this kind of technically your first band winter yeah so do you kind of remember how that went in terms of you joining our band yeah because um i was in sixth form at the time but i was also in the process of dropping out of sixth form so i was like sick this is something to do i'm gonna do it uh, just like I remember, I didn't obviously... know we were a replacement for your education. <laughs> yeah, thanks, guys. I was like, right, fuck this. I'm dropping out. I'm gonna be famous. <laughs> Long story short, I work in a bar. <laughs> but yeah, because I remember you guys obviously sent over like all the songs yeah. that you had written, and I had to try and learn them in yeah. time for the first practice. And I was like, oh no. <laughs> Time to learn the words. <laughs> yeah, we, all, we all had like a FaceTime, didn't we? Yeah. So obviously you started in a band with us in 2015. When did you start doing music in general? Um, and kind of what started it? I think I got like my first guitar, like started lessons when I was eight. I can't work out what year that was. 2005, maybe? I haven't done maths in a long time. But um, my dad had a guitar and I was like, oh, that's sick. He couldn't play it. But he could play like Amazing Grace or something. I was like blown away. I was like, that's talent, pure talent. I want to be able to play Amazing Grace as well. So <laughs> for like Christmas one year, I got a guitar. And I'd also like always liked singing, but obviously every kid likes singing. So I never really thought anything of it. And then when I was 12, I started getting like actual singing lessons. But up until then, I didn't. I don't think I really realized you could like right. get singing lessons. I thought it was just kind of like you sing and that's that on that. <laughs> you sing or you don't that's all you do yeah so then from then I just kind of like continued with that right cool so what made you do the jump from I've got a guitar I can sing I'm gonna start YouTube because that's to me that's a leap yeah uh, just yeah go on I always sort of like did covers just like in my own yeah, space yeah you practice inside so. yeah and um because once I sort of like got the hang of like playing guitar and singing at the same time, I was like, this is something. How I unprofessional. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Chaos. And like, I think I posted a few on like Facebook and stuff, like before I started posting on YouTube, because obviously it was just like my friends and stuff. Yeah. So I was like, this is safe. It wasn't, it was in high school. <laughs> Everyone's horrible. So, like, but then I think the full story of why I started posting was me and my friends, this was when we were, I was 15, I think. We're going to try and meet five seconds of summer in Manchester. And I was like, I want to get in with the band. I want to be friends. So I was like, I'm going to post a cover of one of their songs. So then if I meet them, I can be like, oh, will you check out my cover? So I just posted that for that reason. And then was sort of like just tweeted it and was like, oh, you know, check it out. And then from there, I just kind of kept posting. And then for some reason, it just took off. Like, I didn't think it would ever get anywhere. It was purely for the reason that I wanted to be able to be like, watch my cover, lol, so I could say that they'd watched it. But then, because, like, I think it, when it got to, like, a thousand views or something, I was like, whoa, that's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and 15-year-old me was like, 1,000 views, <laughs> fucking hell. So I was like, let's post another one. And then just from there, my channel just kind of grew, even though I didn't particularly do anything to... Make You're just it being grow. yourself and yeah. doing what you want to do. Yeah, it just kind of happened. And so I just kept posting from there because I was like, well, someone likes what I'm doing. Give the people what they want. <laughs> yeah. 
the good covers, <laughs> so I just kept going from there. Did you get a response from five seconds? Yeah, I did. It was like, I'm trying to think what year it was in. I must have been in year 11, I think. And I was in physics. Because I remember, because I was doing nothing. <laughs> I, was <just> on, <laughs> I was on my phone. And someone tweeted me, because I'd changed my Twitter like handle to something different. And um, But in like the description of all my videos, it still had my old one. And one of the members of Five Seconds of Summer had tweeted me about my cover, but tweeted my old Twitter. So I was like, shit, like this <laughs> random lass who's got my old Twitter handles getting all this clout. And I was like, nah, <laughs> I put in the work. I was grinding for this. So then eventually it all got like resolved and they like, but they tweeted <clears throat> my cover out and followed me. All just all in the middle of physics, and I remember my teacher oh my telling God. me to get off my phone, and I was like, I'm having an emergency. <laughs> you do not understand no. right now. I mean, they were just like, all right, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, Thanks. I was like, there's an emergency on Twitter, and they just didn't try to argue. <laughs> not so, there's just an emergency. Yeah. It's on Twitter, it's serious. It's, it's real it's, shit, okay, it's, it's on real. Twitter. With but, a verified account. <laughs> that happened to me in class once in science as well. He must be speaking science. Yeah, thing, no one cares it? about science. I remember entering a competition when there I was is like, some oh. huge fan of like just science just one... and you in that yeah. Venn diagram, yeah. <laughs> and it's just broken hard that you've just said that yeah, on this like, podcast. Shit. <laughs> Quit uni. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. no, I was, I was, I think I was about fifteen as well, and I entered a competition with Kerrang Radio oh, to shit. meet um, to meet Papa Roach and Buck Cherry and go down to Kerrang Radio Studios and watch a live performance and obviously meet them after it. Yeah. And I thought nothing of it, I was like, nah, I'm not gonna win. And then um, my phone started going off in science. And then like, I kind of realized what it obviously would be, because I was like, oh, you know, when you know what when they're gonna ring you, if, you yeah. know, because it says like, oh, we'll ring you tomorrow if you're a winner and stuff like that. So I was kind of expecting a call, but obviously kind of not, I didn't want to get me all yeah. up with it. And then um, obviously I got this call, this random number, and it said Birmingham underneath, and I was like, shit. Oh. So I was like, fuck it, I've got to answer this. So yeah. I was trying to answer it like, really like discreetly <laughs> in class. And then all, like, all the lads around me were trying to like cough and stuff over me whilst I was on the phone <laughs> to this guy. And he was like, um, yeah, is this an all right time to call? And I was like, yeah, no, it's perfect. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. never better. Yeah. Just don't give it away. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and he was like, yeah, we're, um, we're glad to tell you you've, uh, you've won tickets to come to Birmingham. I think he's like, I didn't even ask my mum and dad at the time about it. So literally, like, it was the day after as well. Oh, shit. So I remember, like, I, I remember running out of the classroom, like, standing outside the door because she was literally just about to kick me out. I was like, I might as well just walk out myself. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I just, I just left the classroom and uh, obviously she wondered what the fuck I was doing, but I was yeah. too busy on the, on the phone going, oh, my God, thank you so much. <laughs> um, and then, um, yeah, I put the phone down. And then um, I was like, shit, I've got to find someone to come with me. Like, it's Birmingham tomorrow. I've got to get train tickets. That's my mum and dad. <laughs> mum, <laughs> like, please. Yeah, like, honestly, I begged them, and uh, finally they was like, yeah, you, you can go on. And, um, and I was only, I think Alex Mellencamp was yeah, going yeah. with me because he was like, yeah, I, I'll, I'll be able to come with you then. So we managed to get the day off, and uh, you really wanted to come yeah, with me. Yeah, my parents were so, like, no, like, what the fuck? Well, <laughs> no, no, but before you even found out that, I remember I rang them back, and I was proper cheeky, and I was like, like, I'm sorry to be really cheeky, but I've got another friend that really wants to come. <laughs> yeah. And they were on the phone. Oh, yeah. lost one. Of course, you have another friend that yeah. wants to come. This is Karang. Uh, and, and, uh, and it was like, yeah, no, that's fine. And I was like, fucking hell. So I was like, oh, cheers, guys. And then um, <laughs> I, went to, I went to London. I was like, mate, you coming with? And he was like, yes. And then um, he went up, <laughs> rang me later on. I went, Matt, I can't come. And I was like, why? And he was like, mum and dad won't let me go. <laughs> Me, I said, I'm just fucking ranging back. We're like, so you're gonna have to take the day off school. Yes. And you want us to pay for your train ticket to Birmingham. Yes. <laughs> no. Fuck. <laughs> I mean, it is Birmingham. I mean, if it had been anywhere like, else, it would have been a yeah. Fifteen at the time right, or something okay. like that. Fair, like, I never travelled that far or like with like just my friends like before. Yeah. Like, it if it were me, dear, yeah. I wouldn't want someone from Birmingham congratulating me. Just. Congratulations, you've won. <laughs> like, it's miserable. Who wants yeah, that? Yeah, it's not that like exciting. Yeah. Is no, it? you won this prize. <laughs> so well, well um, done. Ashley ended up coming with us, and then uh, yeah, we went all the way down there. Got in, like watched Papa Roger Book Cherry do, uh, do a set, and then I like, met him after it, which was pretty cool. Um, and then came all the way back from Birmingham. Oh, that was Mad the thrill. <laughs> came yeah. all the way back. I remember though at the time there was there was, <laughs> there was, there was, there was, there was that a was big... the best part of the day. <laughs> <laughs> that return train. <laughs> No, there's a big thing about it because um, while I was in the I studio, just my ticket on the way in. Um, <laughs> Brilliant. <sorry. laughs> when that ticket warden came round and I presented oh. my ticket, 
In my reserved seat. <laughs> no, it was all about that cheeky nap on the train. Oh, yeah. Get, um, get your 40 winks in. Yeah. <laughs> At school, you benefited from a train ride <laughs> and sleep. <laughs> that explains so much about Matty. <laughs> well, the thing is, obviously, oh. like, like round about then, like, you didn't have like proper like iPhones and like social media wasn't as like yeah. a big thing then. So, like, really, obviously, it was just like it was gonna text people, let them know where I am and stuff, and uh, sending out one mass group text, like, yeah. I'm in Birmingham, lol, is that, is <laughs> get it, fucked. You know, like, you know, like Ruffle mail. It was uh, like, oh, give us three rings when you get there from like, your mum or something like yeah. that. Yeah. That's what it was like, it was like, give us three rings when you get there. Yeah. I'm in Birmingham. <laughs> <laughs> I made um, it. I made it. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no. As we was in there meeting Papa Roach and that, apparently you meet six. We're gonna sneak in through the back and right, right about that time, that's when they were like blowing up. Oh yeah. Um, and I remember there being literally loads of people, like hundreds of people outside the windows of Kerrang. They all like the fucking Walking Dead. Honestly, <laughs> like it's on the windows. Oh, that, that. <laughs> so they could clearly see like Papa Roach and all that with them. Yeah. And it was like, oh my god, like, and I didn't know what the fuck was going on because I remember walking out the front doors and I was like, why is there so many people here? I was like, I've just been watching Papa Roach on the window. Yeah, and it turns out obviously. You made six, we're getting like fucking escorted around the back oh, area. Yeah. No one gave a shit about Papa Roach. Yeah, you only didn't see You won the competition because there were two entries. Yeah. There's all these scene kids just outside looking That's like That's why zombies. they said, yeah, you can have an extra ticket. Yeah. There's like four more if you want. Yeah. yeah. You can bring your old class if you want, mate. <laughs> <laughs> the whole science class. Oh. Yeah. No, that was bad times, but yeah. It's supposed to be a science thing. Yeah, just not paying any attention yeah. and having thrilling interactions. Yeah. <laughs> And getting put into um, what was it now isolation one yeah. time because apparently um, I don't recall doing this but apparently uh, <laughs> do you know the splints you can just get and you yeah. set them on fire yeah chuck, like, chucked it in the bin but I didn't realise like, was on fire. like oh, well I can't remember doing it but I, I must have done it but I chucked it in the bin and it set the bin on fire yeah and then we had this sub teacher at the time which was thick as fuck honestly like, she, was, she, was so <laughs> she couldn't control her classroom or anything. Um, and she came in and she was like, oh my God, what's happening? And everyone's like, oh my God. And she's like, Matty chucked it in the bin. I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, I can't remember doing this, but okay. So I took, I, took, I took the shit for it and ended up in isolation. And in isolation turned out to be an absolute whale because... Yeah, no one gives a shit you know, in exactly, isolation. Exactly, you got put in a fucking room on your own. And uh, the guy well. at the time, Mr. Moss, the teacher, he came in and he gave me my math, this math book. He's like, go through some questions on it. And then, yeah, just do what you want. I was like, sick. <laughs> All right. So, break times, I was on my phone, went to sleep. Dinner time, I was on my phone. And Why do all your like positive yeah. experiences sleep, just link sleep, back yeah. to sleep? <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then he let me go like ten minutes before school finished. I was like, mate, this is what fucking uh, <laughs> isolation's like. Get me in here every week. I got suspended <laughs> from college, and I had the best week I've ever had in my life. <laughs> it was great because like we went on a college trip to Lippa. Uh, you know, lovely place. Paul McCartney's done absolute bits. Thanks, mate. So we were going round. Uh, we had a break, so we thought, let's go to the bar, you know. I was 19 at the time, so I was like, sound, I'll have half a pint, you know. Won't go too wild. My mate, who was 17 at the time, it was whiny Wednesdays, so we got two bottles of Shiraz and <laughs> drank them in 45 minutes. <laughs> um, we stood up to leave the bar, and he projectile vomited Shiraz everywhere. <laughs> and then went to the toilet and continued to project our vomit shiraz everywhere so i was like right i'll help clean up this vomit because heavy on you mr barman <laughs> so i was helping clean up the vomit but obviously because i'd been to the bar to order my half a pint i got lumped in with the crime that had been committed <laughs> at that time and we were sat in like not a lecture but like they were doing like a little demonstration of like sounds and my mate was obviously fucking slaughtered so he was just banging on about shite the only topic i remember him talking about was scooby-doo and how <laughs> sick scooby-doo is uh we get pulled out they're like hey jews have been drinking i'm sobbing because i'm like oh my god i'm getting suspended for having half a pint of cider <laughs> my mate's just slaughtered and he's like no we haven't i was like they know <laughs> they know we can't blag this anymore and then, so I was like, I've had half a pint. I could legally drive a car. I can't drive, but in principle, yeah. I could drive a car. And they were like, that's not the point. And I was like, well, what is the point then? Because I've drank on other school trips. All in all, big kickoff. I was sobbing. He was about to batter all the teachers. 
who's like, I know my rights, I'll be taking you to court. <laughs> <laughs> Two bottles of wine down. Uh, I go to college on the Monday. I get told, you're not suspended, but you do have to give in your badge and you can't be on college property. So I was like, so I'm suspended then. Like, that's the definition of a suspension, <laughs> if there ever was one. And they were like, yeah, but you're not suspended. And I was like, right, sound, so I'm not suspended, so it's a week off. Because they were like, you've got to do your work while you're there, like, while you're at home. But if it's not a suspension, it's a week off, so fuck <laughs> off, I'm not doing anything. So I went out of college, went and got a KFC, uh, got my nose pierced, went home and had a nap, fucked about for a week, <laughs> went back and everyone was like, oh, you're all right, like, you can't believe you're suspended. I was like, I am sound. I've had the most thrilling week of my life. I've had an extra week off while you've all had to do work. Just doing fuck all. I watched so much catfish. It was great. Like, belter after belter of an episode, all day, every day. Could eat what I wanted. Domino's takeaway for lunch, no bother. It was just great. (laughs) I would highly recommend. <laughs> Get suspended in school is the moral of that story. Yeah, basically, if you can, just yeah. try and get a week's suspension. Listen, Don't do too much to, like, get you expelled or, like, you know, more than a week, I think, would be too much, really. A bit too much time on your own. Do start losing your mind a bit. But a week! Yeah. Great. There you go, kids. Just, uh... Get smashed on school trips. Yeah, just or, get um, bladdered. Set fire to the uh, bin in the classroom. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> You'll have an absolute yeah. ball. <laughs> and sleep on trains. And sleep. There you just go. Just sleep at any given opportunity. So, we m- might as well, whilst we're on the... Uh, <laughs> drift away from suspending <laughs> people from colleges and shit. Um, so, obviously, Traps and Arm finished in 2016. Um, have you thought about going into a band since? Or are you happy with what what you're doing now or I think I would like to be in a band again it's just a case of like finding people who want to be in like the same sort of like genre of music because yeah. like there's like quite a good music scene in Leeds like there's loads of like smaller venues and stuff and like there's plenty of like independent music and stuff but just a case of and also like with being a lady <laughs> People might not want a female vocalist. Right. You know what I mean? Like, which is heavy, but it's. But like we a spoke thing. when we spoke to Jamie, he said that it's obviously the scene since we were like as a band. The scene in general, and like the actual reaction towards female fronted bands, has changed completely because yeah. it's like so much like a resurgence in female fronted bands yeah. doing really good shit at the minute. Yeah. Um, the attitudes changed. I can kind of agree with that because I mean, like. There is like a variation now. There's yeah. No, like, there's no. It's not just like you sound like a paramour band now. Yeah. Because there's such a variation. So much more. Yeah, I think with like the type of music that I'm like interested in and would want to play, like it is like the genres are like more male fronted, but there's like there's still plenty of bands that are. Yeah. Like not even just female fronted have like female members in and stuff yeah. now. So it is definitely a lot better. But it's also finding a whole band within, like, a close proximity that aren't already, yeah. like, fully formed and are wanting to do the same thing. Yeah. So, like, it is almost just, like, easier to do my own thing for yeah. now until I find that. But also when it comes to recording, it makes everything way more expensive because it's just one person <coughs> yeah. paying for it rather than a whole group of people yeah, splitting no, the cost. Sure. So that makes it a bit harder because <laughs> yeah. I have no But way. then you have full creative <laughs> control though because I mean if it being that you are the only input as such yeah apart from obviously if you get like outside opinions stuff like that but it makes the creative process probably easier in some senses because you know it's like battle with other people's opinions and, yeah. and stuff like that see to me I think the opposite I think if it was just me making something I have no like oh I don't want to do that because this person doesn't do this that yeah, way yeah. you can do anything you possibly want and it's me, it's terrible. I think it's good having that. Um, it's ter- terrible. <laughs> terrible. <laughs> Awful. I think it's yeah. I think it's, having there's that. too mu- too like too many options that yeah. you just go. Oh, I'm not gonna do anything. Yeah, it can be like a bit. It's like because limitations are quite good to have. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure the same as with art as well. Yeah. When you say do anything. It's like like if I just go draw or paint me something, you're gonna be like of in the style of. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, True, true. I always see, like, I always check up on, like, how many views Lungs has got, like, 
every once in a while. And I always see comments of like when you're releasing new music, and it's yeah. like. Yeah, if it's been four years, years maybe yeah. give up hope. We got a message on the page of the week, didn't we? Because I got yeah. a notification about it. I yeah, yeah. To it. yeah, and I was like, there's been no activity. And the last post was, we've split up. Yeah, but yeah. they're like, <laughs> so when are you guys touring then? I was like, <laughs> so never. <laughs> yeah. No, there is always comments on, on the videos and that mm. saying, like, uh, like when, you, when you're going to be doing stuff again. Or even people going, when's Trapped in Arm? When you're releasing your new singles, it's always like, like, yeah. <laughs> never. It was a thing, it happened, it went, yeah. it's gone. Like, it's cool to see that people are know. still enjoying it though, even though it's like, Yeah, definitely. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You know I keep forgetting like? to cancel the annual payment to put it on the whole streaming service. Oh, nice. Every August it comes out and I go, oh shit, I was supposed to cancel that yacht last year. <laughs> just still for paying another year. for it. Just like, oh, I'll do it next year. <laughs> make the most of it, it's fine. Yeah. It's all good. Enjoy it, it will be down one day. <laughs> <laughs> Poof, gone. <laughs> I was like that with this, uh, an old band called Futures that split up years ago. And he, the stuff was on Spotify and it was on like the past few months. It's just gone. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> just disappeared all of back. a sudden. Because <laughs> then we like watch the video every once in a while and just go, fuck, we could have done so much more with that music video. Yeah, let's let's well, not we had talk about the that. absolute worst time with that video <laughs> that could ever be had. Why did it take four months? No. <laughs> Oh no, we filmed it all we once, are didn't we? <laughs> yeah, we filmed it twice. Yeah, and it's still took well, they, they ten were, years. They were both in Manchester, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. one in Hyde. The real fun one was um, stuffing you in the bottom <laughs> footwell of the car, <laughs> just driving over yeah. every we, speed. Well, we, we put we had the back seats down, didn't we? The car, and because I like all the amps yeah. and cabs and well, stuff. Well, yeah, because I'd hide out like an eight by ten, my like, biggest car. <laughs> yeah. Which was a night. This was the first time we did the video. Yeah. It was a nightmare trying to like lug that up the stairs, and then we steep stairs once it as yeah. well. Yeah. So we was trying to lug that up there, and we finally got that up, and then Matt had his cab, and then we had obviously the bits of like drum like drum bits, you know, with the cymbals and everything like that. Yeah. And uh, I'd like to make the point as well. We didn't even use the fucking cabs in the video. We didn't end up using the cabs in the video, and then we didn't even. The video got fucking lost. Yeah. Well, we'll get to that in a minute. We'll get, we'll get to that in a minute. Put that one on hold. Yeah. And you know, it was just funny because we had all the back seats down in Matt's car, and uh, me and Matt were sat in the front seat, and Lum was like, "What Matt doing then?" He was just like, "There's a bit of room in that footwell." <laughs> Lie down. Yeah. So Lum <laughs> fucking lies down. Now he's back inside. He's side in the fucking that was the most of the car. Right. Thing. It's got like the cabs hanging over his head. Bits of like fucking like the drum stands and stuff. <laughs> Stabbing into it. And, uh, yeah. And um, I was like, man, this is hilarious. And so I like Matt was like driving over every speed bump, <laughs> every pothole, just yeah. straight into it. And all you could hear from Matt was like, ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> and you're like, mate, get down, get down. I was like, ah. <laughs> Do you know what? For the short period of time, because we joined the band at the same time, yeah. we had a new drummer and a new singer at once. Yeah. I actually surprisingly enjoyed it for two shows we played. We had like so many band practices yeah. and <laughs> one video. For that small amount of time, it was actually a, a laugh. It was quite yeah. fun. Yeah, it was, it was quite cool. fun. Yeah. Driving to London to play to like eight people. Yeah. Okay, Just play two people. My name changed the way back. Yeah. Bobby. Yeah. Bobby and Hot, hot Pants. pants. <laughs> Your Ma- name hot was changed to hot pants. With a Z. With a Z. <laughs> With a Z. <laughs> Fuck. But yeah, no, it was like obviously filming that whole music video, like that whole day was tiring, and then getting that sweet and then message. getting that message saying, um, yeah, well, I've lost all the files, and we were just corrupted like, or went to it or something. Ah! I was something like, like, I thought people backed stuff up, but we ended yeah. up having arguments over it, didn't we? Yeah. And, and then, then we filmed it again, yeah. and then it still took like four months to produce it. Mm. Four months to film. So we recorded. Didn't we record it in February and then got it in July? Yep. Yeah. Something yeah. like that. It was yeah. something ridiculous like um, that. I Do- remember reading someone's comment was, uh, "It looks like it's been made on Windows Movie." <laughs> <laughs> Windows Probably Media Player, was. and I was like, "It was you know iMovie, what? actually." I can't Bob argue on. with that. Bob on. <laughs> so I mean, analyzing those transitions, I was like, "Ooh, maybe." <laughs> yeah. You're not wrong, sir. <laughs> Funny oh. enough, we had a photo shoot for Oxbloods in the exact same studio that we recorded the second version oh of that. Yeah, oh, did, really? Yeah. So we had like a proper nostalgic PTSD. throwback of that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, it, it was bad for me though, because on that photo shoot, I'd been on a night out in, oh, in, in Manchester. <laughs> So I was completely wrecked. And yeah. I woke up in the morning and I was hungover to fuck. Like, 
honestly, I felt like throwing up. I was, you know what I mean? I was yeah, that bad. I was white as like a ghost. And I was like, shit, I've got a fucking photo shoot today. <laughs> and obviously, we, we, we're not at the point where we're having getting pampered before we do a photo yeah. shoot, obviously. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Where someone's going around with makeup. Um, you look like you prolapsed. Yeah. So on the photos of it, <laughs> no, we actually released them as well as promo oh shots. God. And you look at me, my, my lips are like I blood red. I can't find a picture of <laughs> yeah, it. Just like, yeah. My lips are blood red. My face is like, oh, why is a sheet? Honestly, it was bad. Oh, my God. I just looked wrecked on the photo shoot. Oh, so yeah, that place doesn't hold a, a good... Yeah, no fond memories. <laughs> no. Any good place. standards. Yeah. Have you found it? Give us a minute. Please hold. Please hold. Enjoy the silence. There we go. Fine. So Fine. that is silence. Ghost Rough Matty. <laughs> How rough is that, though? <laughs> oh, me. Look at my lips. Look, I've got lipstick on. I oh, know. Um, what happened to you? A bit of rouge. <laughs> <laughs> Can we please put that on the... Yes. All the no. Instagram. <laughs> that's, that's been destroyed as soon as it can. Mate, it's just everywhere. It's already everywhere. It's yeah, I well, know, but we'll need to release new photos anyway. I know, I know. Because of certain <laughs> events. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's already happened. So, yeah, we have to we have a structure change. Structure change. <laughs> yeah, Is that what you call this now? Yeah. <laughs> After how many years of putting up with that shit? Yeah. <laughs> I want to know, why do you still want to look for a band and join band because I've been v- well and truly put off them <laughs> no offence to that, us yeah. but the amount of money we invested yeah. into doing stuff with such little return I want to know why you want to like I'm not saying don't do a band I get it <laughs> but like you have a good solo thing going on on YouTube you've clearly got a following why do you want to do a band is it just the genre thing or um, it kind of like takes the pressure off as well because when it's just you it's yeah. just you like that's it that's all you're doing the whole focus <laughs> is on you if you fuck up there's no one there to like back you, you up yeah. it's, you're straight down down to hell and it's just sort of like having like other people there as well like again with like the money if you're yeah. just trying to do it all yourself it takes a lot longer to get to somewhere and I feel like with like solo acoustic stuff that's a really like small genre for playing shows like a lot especially with like the type of music i play most of the shows i play are with like full bands anyway but it would be probably a lot easier to get booked on more shows if it was like a full band rather than just so is it the live element that's one because you have been supporting some bands haven't you in the past and it's how did it go was it yeah it was good i think i've done like some shows with like bands who were like not just like acoustic sets, yeah. they're like full band sets, and it's been like good. The reception was good to them as well, even though like it was obviously a completely different vibe because mm-hmm. it was like a pop punk show, so they're obviously a lot more upbeat. And then yeah. I was just there, like, hi, I'm gonna just make everyone really sad now. So, Can you raise the blades out, yeah, everybody? like <laughs> me first on, like, get ready to cry, lol, get a beer, <laughs> think about what you've been through, but then. <laughs> Remember when your family used to love you? Yeah. This one is called I Hate Myself. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, that was the whole set. <laughs> Brought the tone down from the start. But um, I played, like, I did a couple shows where it was all just, like, acoustic or solo acts. So everyone was kind of, like, on the same vibe. And I played with This Wildlife and William Ryan Key. And they was... It was an acoustic set, and so then the yellow card in set. Yeah, 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 it was like acoustic set for him. Huge, 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 huge. <laughs> and then obviously this wildlife for like an acoustic yeah. sort of band. You've got so, that feel, haven't they? Yeah. So it's a lot easier to like play to crowds at those sort of shows because they're already, you know, they want that vibe. They're there to get sad. Yeah. You know what I mean? Whereas at pop punk shows, people are just like trying to have a good time, and I'm just there like. Hm. You thought, lol, ha, yeah. uh, you're going to feel things now and you're probably not going <laughs> to like it. <laughs> How does it feel performing now? Because performing live was was the first time. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, performing live, it, well, the first time wasn't with Trapped in Autumn, was it? Or I don't know. Um, it? I'd done, like, solo stuff before, but never, like, actual what? stuff. He's <laughs> such a dick. It's a genuine question. <laughs> Sorry for his unprofessionalism. Chaotic. <laughs> Are you okay, mate? <laughs> What's so funny? Matty is in tears right now. <laughs> oh. 
let's crack on. <laughs> let's crack on. We were trying. Why did you interrupt? It's alright, let's crack on. No, no, no. We're we'll making like a thing of this now. <laughs> Why? What is so funny? Nothing, let's just crack on with it. <laughs> nah, I want answers. You can see veins popping out your neck. God. I want answers. <laughs> it's alright, we'll just crack on. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> fucking interrupting me. <laughs> oh, I'm with it. Oh, I was fuck. trying to. You should say obscenely loud that burp. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Maybe laugh after I've drank a fucking full mouthful of water. It's just like, like so yeah. Nah. <laughs> oh oh it. my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh man. I've also whilst we've been doing this, I've had the nostalgic flashback of it. <laughs> <laughs> this is just a podcast of us laughing at one another, isn't it? Oh. Of the year. Uh, Red Tide Curry, you had four. Oh. <laughs> Recording oh, in London. Everywhere. Do you remember that? Yeah. We went to a Thai, thai we place had a... as we were recording lungs for, what was it, two, three days? Yeah. In the posh parts of the, Chelsea. Yeah. Chelsea. Yeah. Parts of Chelsea. <laughs> Just the second part of your food fucking extravaganza whilst we were recording the... Yeah, no, well, we went to the Thai place, didn't we? We walked yeah. down the road. Went and, back uh... to the studio with it. Yeah. We all sat down with, like, fucking... Red Thai curry sat in our laps trying to spoon it in. And there's Matty with a, a lap full <laughs> of red Thai, thai curry. curry. Just so all over it. Him. It was proper running, it just went everywhere. Yeah, because the day that we travelled, I'd overdosed on caffeine and couldn't stomach any food. And that was the day oh, for me 13 yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, hours to eat a bread roll. 13 oh, yeah, hours yeah. for one bread roll. That was a dark day for me. <laughs> you were just like picking at it, like, yeah, I was just, like with this bits sad bread. bread roll. So, we're, like, first time we go recording, so what does Emmy eat? Uh, she just eat just, bread. Just bread. <laughs> bread. That's all. And then, speaking of bread, it was when we went out to explore the wonderful sites that was Chelsea, and you went to get a ham and cheese bar. Oh, well, we made a scene before we even went in. So, we're walking you past made all these, the scene. Yeah. Well, we was walking past all these like posh, like little like cafes and little restaurants. Cause you know what Chelsea's like when yeah. it's proper like pretentious and stuff like that. But yeah, as we was going in there, I, uh, I, I instead of it being uh, obviously a pull door, I pushed it. Oh yeah. So I, and I nearly put the glass door through. <laughs> so then the woman behind the counter was looking at me like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> <laughs> so I walked in. I was like, "Oh, sorry." And then obviously she realised it was Northern. Then. <laughs> game, over. Yeah, game over. That explains. So, yeah, so I go, yeah. "Remember, mate." You don't say <laughs> bam because they don't know what the fuck one is. So and then he gets the bap. yeah. No, did you call it a bap? A oh, bread roll. He oh, said roll. something like that. So he goes, "Oh yeah, can I have a, um, a ham and cheese, cheese roll, please?" <laughs> and then she goes, "What?" And he goes, "Can I have a ham and cheese roll, please?" And he showed to me weird. So I was like, "Ham and cheese bap." And then she was still looking at me like I was an alien. And I was like, <laughs> and then she ham and cheese bam. Just in case she might have heard <laughs> yeah, of bam. she's going to get onto that one. No, ham and cheese tea cake, no. <laughs> um, and then she just ended up like, just and she gave me a fucking me. And she just gave me a fucking baguette. And I was a like, seeding, a seeded, a seeded baguette. baguette. I was like, you know what? I'll just have that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She's just listened to you like list all of these words and she's yeah. gone, baguette. That's yeah, what he's on about. Roll, bar, baguette, muffin. Like, what other <laughs> words? I would have just bread. thought roll would sum yeah. it up. You know what I mean? Like, if someone says a bread roll, that's what I mean. It's like, a bread so roll. I don't know what she's it. calling it. But yeah. Scuffler. <laughs> I don't know. It's weird. Scuffler. Oh, I hate that. <laughs> <laughs> it's the the constant debate. Didn't we like when we did lungs? Weren't we like there until like three o'clock in the morning? Yeah, each day. Yeah. yeah. It was a laugh. I yeah, because I remember was um, obviously when. You well, you guys were driving back through. I've suppressed the whole trip, so this yeah. is just <laughs> pushed it yeah. all down. Well, when we was going back to um, our accommodation, like, we were staying at Jamie's place. Yeah. Um, I remember I was obviously driving through the centre of um, Camden, 
And I remember there just constantly being ambulances and police cars. Yeah, I remember trying to sleep in that car. Because it was it was a Saturday as well, wasn't it? Yeah. So it was a Saturday at three o'clock in the morning, and I was trying to get back to Jamie's place in work. Where was that? Seven Sisters. Seven, yeah. Near, near Seven sisters. sisters. But obviously going through Camden. I was stranded Camden. there the other day. Fucking hell. Full circle. <laughs> seven Sisters. Yeah. Who's yeah. actually? Yeah, when I went to see Fleetwood Mac or Airbnb, it oh, was no, just right. not home. They were on holiday, so... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh that's God. that. That's alright, isn't it? Yeah. Men. Yeah. It was just chaotic, though, wasn't it? I mean, obviously, a few guys driving as well, like... I didn't drive. I was going to drive, drive then. Me and was, Mugen. Oh, you and Mugen, Mugen yeah. What an eventful time that was. <laughs> Chaotic. <laughs> Just driving that around London to begin with is horrible enough. Yeah. Yeah, used it. We got lost in London though. The day of the photo shoot, oh, you made oh, it there. Fuck. I don't, don't know, know where the f- fuck we ended up, <laughs> but it was not at the photo shoot. I think I literally organised it like it was a tourist trip because we recorded, and on the way back, I organised it that we were going to have a photo shoot after three days of recording. Yeah. And That's then, a great idea. <laughs> and then go home. And I was like, I remember like having the realization that this was not a good idea yeah. when we was yeah. like doing it. It was cool because I remember like after some evenings after we'd been <coughs> in the studio, we'd uh, go into the centre of London at like fucking stupid. Samantha the, the Fox. The Fox. Yeah. Yeah. Neil, Neil the Fox. Neil the Fox. Neil. Neil. <laughs> Do you remember? And we was just walking along like the South Bank and just going down like past our like. The, like the London Eye and everything like that and, at like two o'clock in the morning and we, yeah. we, was, we was all on the park and that, weren't we? Yeah. And then we bumped into Neil the Fox just casually yeah, strolling just around. Yeah, like, oh, the fuck? I didn't know like foxes strolled around like urban Isn't areas it? like this. So. On the, like, didn't on the we give him a cookie London. or something? Yeah, I had a cookie yeah. on me so I'll give Neil the Fox a cookie and he seemed pretty <coughs> happy with it. And then they went through one of those uh, spinny doors yeah. and went into like one of the business places. So he, he might be like the, <laughs> he head, just up. the yeah. head honcho of that place. Yeah, you never knows. know. It's just a real, it real life version yeah. of Fantastic Mr. Fox. Yeah. yeah. It sounds like a Mighty Boosh sketch. Just <laughs> the, the crack, crack fox. fox. Yeah. <laughs> Gave him a biscuit and he went and doing his business. Yeah. Well, he's looking well now, the crack fox. He's doing good for himself. He's crack reformed. Fox. <laughs> Brackets, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a laugh, that trip, though. Yeah. The London trip was. But that was the first occasion I almost killed us. Oh, oh yeah, that, it was. That was. And we was like yeah. screaming Foo Fighters at you on the way back because yeah. you were falling I asleep. Was <laughs> I was like this. I was like, oh. So we were screaming, like blasting the music, like full blast, and then screaming at you, like going on the way back. I remember trying to like brave it, like, no, I can do this. I can get through it. And then uh, <laughs> there's a service station coming up. And I was like, anybody need the toilet? And both of you just went, yeah, you do. Pull over. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, yeah, great idea. <laughs> Because if no one told me they needed the toilet, I'd just go, I'll wait, it'll be okay. It'll <laughs> I'm be falling fine. Asleep. <laughs> and we'd all be dead. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's that on that. Well, that was the second time I nearly hoping. died. <laughs> died driving oh, no, with him. that was the first. Well, that was the, well, that was the other first time. Yeah. The first no, incident. I had out of two occasions. kill me and Matty in the car. Yeah, he loves doing it. I do. <laughs> His favourite pastime. <laughs> My favourite thing was, you probably not listened to it, but he looked at me at download... He just went, mate, in a parallel universe, we'd be dead. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> it was just out of nowhere, no context. He was like, that time you almost killed me. I was like, thanks, yeah, thanks for reminding me of that. I'm sorry once again. But yeah. yeah. I, mean, I mean, I think we talked about it on the podcast before, yeah, haven't we? Yeah, but, but have you heard it? Have you heard the story, Emma? I don't think so. It was coming back from downloading Matt, obviously, decides to. What? Oh, no, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So we, we, we it's on the Sunday, wasn't it? And we'd watched. Um, who was that on the last day then? Aerosmith. Aerosmith, yeah. Watched Aerosmith. Excellent. We, we, <laughs> we, we went back to camp. Wasn't there. Um, and then I had a, I had a few, like, few more drinks and that with the lads and stuff. And then we all packed our tents down and that. And me and Matt thought, oh, it's a good idea. Now, why don't we go home? And it was like one o'clock in the Just morning. Just the thought of like. I could have my bed right yeah. now. I need that. It was that. calling to you. Yeah. yeah. And we was all knackered. We was, we was just tired as fuck after five days camping. And I was like, right, we'll go home. And uh, so we started driving. And I was like, uh, you know what? I might put my head down for a bit of sleep. And uh, and then just some, I don't know what it was, but I thought, no, nah, I'll stay awake for a bit. Even though I really wanted to go to sleep, I thought, you know what? I need to stay awake. So I stayed awake. And then uh, I just turned to the right and I saw Matt's head while I was driving. <laughs> his eyes closed and his head hit the headrest in the car. <laughs> Oh, and uh, I was like, shouting, I was like, Matt! Um, and he, he fucking shit himself, woke up and obviously got his steering yeah. right again. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, we are pulling over at the services. 
Like, oh. yeah, and we just did the same night like, trick again, just fucking blasting the music out, and I was just shouting at him all the way to the services. Um, yeah. It was bad until we got food. Once I had food, I was like, yeah. oh, I'm fine. He, he, did, he, he had, like, a jog all the way around at the services, and everything was brilliant. Get the blood pumping. Yeah, yeah that was it. It worked. This is crazy, that, though. Well, yeah, that's what I said to him. I was like, in a parallel universe, if I would have gone to sleep... We'd actually be dead. He just actually was as well. You were not that clear about it, though. You just looked at me and went, mate, in a parallel universe, we'd be dead. I was like, in a parallel universe, we'd still be alive, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, are you in the process of writing new stuff now? Yeah. By yourself? Like, where are you at with it? Is, Is it an, like, app? an app? An yeah. app, yeah. You're doing an app. Writing an app. Or a look. Um, I'm going to do an app first. See the response, you know. <laughs> Dip my toes in water. Um, I've got like, at the moment, I've got like five tracks that I like gig, and do some covers in the set as well, you know, because right, no yeah. one knows my songs, so they need something to be like, oh, <laughs> know that one, so we chuck a cover or two in there. But um, I don't know if I'll end up choosing those to actually record with or not, because. I do the thing where I play a song like four times. I'm like, right, that's it. I hate that now. So <laughs> time to just throw that one away. So who knows? Next. But hopefully sooner rather than later, I'll be able to get something recorded. Is again, just a case of saving money as well. The monies. Yeah, i got to save that dollar from my shit job. You've got <laughs> Sorry, two million. Sorry, Keith, I love you. Well, <laughs> you've got, got, got two million. million. Got two million. Yeah, I've got two million, so it'll be sound, really. I'm going to LA. <laughs> yeah. Took all the wonga at it. Yeah. I was literally about to ask something. My brain's gone completely blank. This is awesome. What a host. Yes, what Min. a host. What a host. What a host. So what keeps you motivated to push, in, push, his push <coughs> on? Terrible host as well. <laughs> um, we suck. <laughs> what keeps you motivated to keep going and keep going for it? Um, I think because I don't like... I obviously don't do music at uni, I do art. You are so it's something other than that to it takes do with you away my time. From art, yeah. yeah. And it's just it's good to have that as something I can do just for enjoyment rather than like getting graded on it or feeling like especially with the fact it's like not recorded, it is literally just playing it live at the moment. So People tend to not be mean enough to come up to you after and be like, that was shit. <laughs> so there's basically no negative repercussions from it. So it's just a case of I can do it because I enjoy it. So it's nice to have that outside of like uni and work. Has it created more interest because there is actually no like physical format of it. It's only live. So is it creating more interest in actually seeing what you're doing when you play in these shows? I think so. I think as well, like <clears throat> it's when if I post like just a clip of a song that I've written like on like my social media. Yeah. Cause there is no sort of like access to the full thing right now. It does kind of like build interest to it as well. Cause people want the whole thing and it's a good way to like scout if there is interest for it as yeah. well. Cause obviously if there was no response to it, then I'd be like, right, well may not spend like three yeah. grand <laughs> recording it. <laughs> may as well just sack that off. But then if there's actually like positive response to it, yeah. you know, it makes it more like I might actually pursue it and spend the money and get it done cool um and if you had like anyone from like youtube followers like if you've got that you've actually come to shows because you like you're playing shows or is it just like a brand new audience like target audience you've got there where you've been playing to i think it is pretty much like a brand new audience <clears throat> like i've had like i think more so is that like the this wildlife show because obviously there was more people there there was a couple of people who messaged me afterwards and were like, oh, you know, I saw your set tonight. I used to watch you on YouTube. And I just get, like, people still coming up to me, like, now in, like, work and stuff, being like, oh, you know, I used to watch your YouTube. I follow you on this and that and stuff. Yeah. But I think with gigs, it is more of, like, a whole new audience rather than YouTube audience. Because obviously it's so spread out as well yeah. on YouTube. Like, it is literally, like, a worldwide platform. So I'm pretty much only gigging in Leeds, so there is just a small amount of people in a small Leeds. small cluster. Yeah, and chances are I'm friends with most of them because I'm yeah. friends with all of the emos in Leeds. So. <laughs> Translator. Yeah. Cool. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't have been any more believable about that. <laughs> That's yeah, cool. cool. Yeah, cool, cool. 
I do wish I'm gonna loop that. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. 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 <laughs> Make a dog out of it. <laughs> <sighs> so re- obviously recently you've started doing more YouTube content that you have done like in the past couple of years. Is it just because like you've got new equipment or is it that you just decided to like jump back into it and you want to take some time off it or um i think i kind of like got a bit sick of having an internet like presence because it was kind of like everything you did people would comment on especially like once you gain more of a following people think that's like an invitation to like not so much say whatever they want but like criticize yeah but unnecessarily so like on shit that like doesn't matter as well and it just kind of like with having it from like 15 that's such like an age where you are like grown up so much between like 50 and 18 so growing up with that constant like watch over you i was just kind of like sick of it i was like i can't be bothered anymore you know having these people comment on everything in my life when they well, don't we, actually know me well we a factor of you like going i can't be asked doing that because like after the band we all went quiet and yeah all got a bit like not emo, but, yeah. <laughs> like, what's the I think it was just the, there was what's that the time needed to kind of like I don't know, kind of just step away from it because obviously the, the way it went was that what well, we stopped doing band stuff pretty much like what in 2015, and it was only like after a couple of months we kind of went yeah. right, we're officially nailing this in the head and we're properly announcing stuff like that. Like I think we we called it quits like early two thousand sixteen, but we stopped doing stuff back in like November December because Mike left in yeah. December. We didn't winter. know what we were yeah. doing. He was very inactive on the page as well. Yeah. Like, so obviously yeah. we, we knew it had kind of like stopped, but obviously we didn't really inform anyone. Yeah, and, we just and, and, like, then, and then we all messaged each other and went, "We should really notice it on the band page. Yeah. <laughs> like, we should say something." Because <laughs> we still didn't decide what was happening with it. I was going, "I still want to do it." You were really done with it because it was being what version three for Yeah, it was now. Mark three, wasn't it? By that point, what yeah. was your point of view on it, and how did you feel once it finished? Um, I think I'd kind of like assumed it was done because obviously we hadn't done anything in months, hmm. and I was on. I remember I was in London with college. I was on like an art trip, and I think it was you. Who yeah, I me, rang you, and I was just sat in Bella Italia, <laughs> <just having a pizza. laughs> and I was like, "Why is Lung calling me? Like I haven't spoken to him properly in ages." And I was like, "You're right," and you're like. Yeah, you're all right, mate. I was like, yeah, I'm just in London, like, you know, hanging out. And you're like, sick, eh, uh, so trapped in all of him. Not anymore. <laughs> and I was like, right, fair play, yeah. <laughs> Speak to you later you then, mate, yeah. Yeah, ta And that was that. I was like, and everyone was like, what was that about? I was like, oh, just me band's done. And everyone was like, what? And I was like, it's all right. And just kept being with me. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? I mean, we were so like so casual, casual to it by that point. Yeah, so I'd, someone told Emma, shit. <laughs> I was just sat in a restaurant. I was like, oh, this is strange. I've not spoke to Lund for a while. <laughs> so I just assumed it was like the unspoken like thing we that we weren't doing anything. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Let's nail it on the yes. head. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> and was it that you did you do any like music related after that? Or was you kind of like, oh, I need a break from bands music. Yeah, it was just kind of like I'd I dropped out of sixth form and was going to college to like start my A levels over again, and like I was like at that point, ugh, that point I dropped out because of like mental health. So I was like, I need to like screw my head on, get my A levels and sort my life out. So I was like, I need to focus on doing actual life things. Yeah. And then when I've got that sorted, I can focus more on doing music as well. So I was like, I need a rest. <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone was like that, though, because I know we, we'd we started Oxbloods as a project, but then he didn't do anything for, like, three years properly, which was like, what the mm. fuck? Um, but I think, obviously, you was the same, where you were like, nope, done with bands, done yeah. with music, creativity for a bit. You completely changed scapes, and you went into, like, sound design and stuff like that. We completely tried to go for a different sound as a band. Yeah, well, no, no, that. well, for a while, we just... We we stopped stuff for a while, then we mm. went to uni, and then uh, we it was just it was kind of by accident, wasn't it? Like we kind of got Oxbloods going because obviously we got chat with Alex, and then yeah, and then that was that. Yeah, but yeah, we we proper halted things, which is mm. the first for like us lot because we're like right next band, right yeah. next song, so next EP, it, next recording. Yeah, <laughs> to kind of go like stop was really was, yeah, a was massive weird. change for us. To be fair, it's time well because it was like what third year. 
and all yeah. that shit by that oh, point. Man, it was good that having student loan and not wasting all the money on the band. <laughs> <laughs> I think so, it's always that feeling though, isn't it? Because like, it's the, it's the begrudging thing about being in a band. Yeah. Like, you want to take the next step, you want to do these things, but the thing with the music industry is just, it's just shit to the fact that everything has a price and it's not exactly like cheap and it's yeah. not there's always something there's a catch to everything and then you get no return time. like whatever you invest in your equipment feels like a long way until you can actually get that money back in, yeah. from it yeah like it's a lot of like work and a long process to get to the point where you're putting money into it and even getting the same amount back let yeah. alone like making a profit off of it but it's one of those obviously like you do it because you love doing it which is obviously like, the main reason but you can't like just rely on just doing it just because you love doing it. Like you've yeah. got to you've got to make some money, some money back screw from your it. head on, haven't you? Yeah. yeah. So look at it as a business. At the yeah, same you've got to look at it from a professional point of view as well as like you obviously you want to do it as a hobby or you know. What yeah. I mean? like, it's one of those. I you, think it's one of them when you have to have the you have to have the interest and you have to have the passion for it, but you also have to have that side of the knowledge to be able to mm. make something of it. Because there's so many bands now go, right, I'll start a band. And then here's this Facebook page and here's new music in six yeah, months' time. Months, and yeah. by that point, no one gives a shit because you're not posting anything on your band page in six months. And there has to be some sort of logic behind everything. I know that there's more people clicking on to that. Obviously, it's such a concentrated like industry now. It's ridiculous. Yeah. But yeah, that's my rental. At what point did you feel uh, you started just... <clears throat> so you did YouTube... And you're uploading because you want to do it and you're enjoying it. Is there a point where you were going, I'm going to start taking this seriously and really invest my time into it? Um, Sort of, but it was still always like a hobby rather than I was like, I want to make this a career yeah. or just somewhat a career, like make money off it. Like I did get money off of my videos at some point, like when I was uploading regularly, but it was still more just like I want to enjoy making the content especially when i was like dropped out of sixth form because i was like i've got all this free time to do what i want so may as well make videos use, that i like yeah. to make but it was never like i'm gonna make this video because i think it'll have a good reception it was just yeah. kind of like i want to make this video so i'm gonna do it hopefully <laughs> someone watches it and <laughs> remotely enjoys it maybe a little bit so it was always more just for fun rather than ever which is the best attitude business. to have about it yeah, yeah. Because I never went into it thinking I'm gonna do this to get a following. <clears throat> yeah. It was always more just like I wanted to do it, so I think that was like what was different about it. So jumping from that to writing your own stuff, what's your creative process? How do you even approach writing your own stuff from covers? Um, it's like it's definitely a lot different because obviously you have to come up with absolutely everything, especially yeah. when you're a solo artist. There's no help from anyone no other input it's just you and yourself but um it's basically just whenever i have a big feeling <laughs> i'm like how can i put this into words yeah. and so normally i'll like if i have an idea for a lyric i'll just like jot it down like in my phone or something and then when i get the time or like feel motivated to try and write like a whole song I can sort of work around those like one line ideas, even if I don't end up using that line in the end. So it's like you got little chunks of ideas that you yeah. put together and yeah. Because like the songs I wrote now, I pretty much started gigging my own stuff. I started like over a, just over a year ago, but like the songs that I had then, I just don't play anymore because I kind of just wrote them in the hopes that I would end up liking them. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't like them, so I sat them off. But the songs I gig now, like, I wrote after, like, my most recent breakup because I was like, big feelings, yeah. write songs about it. <laughs> that's a good model, yeah. big feelings, write songs. Yeah, so that's, like, how I got into it this time around. And then because I'd kind of had that push to write then, it was just a lot easier to sort of continue on with that because I was already sort of, like, thinking about how to put what I feel into words. But... Before that, it was just a case of literally winging it. <laughs> like, I had no fucking clue what to write about. I was like, oh, God, I know nothing about myself. I like that, though. It's a good way of approaching it. Yeah, definitely. 
Because I mean, I've, the, actually, I'm interested in how you approach songwriting in comparison. So, because in my head, when I write songs, I'll come up with a part. I'll I'll think of the full song in my head. Yeah. Whilst I'm doing it, I'll think of this. I could do this. I could do whatever. What's in this next section? Is your approach similar to that, or do you just take it step by step? Um, I think it's normally step by step. I'll have sort of like a general idea of what I want the song to be and like yeah. sound like at the end, but I don't restrict it to that because otherwise I'll just end up like frustrating myself and never writing anything. Yeah. But I'll normally like I'll just sort of like come up with like a lyric and sort of like a melody that to go with it, and then just like play around with my guitar and see where I get from that and just build off of that. Yeah. But I normally will have an idea of like what type of sound I want the song to have like from the get-go. Yeah. Cool. So skipping completely different sections, you're obviously into horror films. Yes. <laughs> I thought we'd merge slowly into this. <laughs> thinking about it like, Ease yeah. it in. <laughs> so what's your sort of like favourite go-to sort of like sub-genre of horror like what's your kind of like preference on that um sort of like films set in like deep south america like right. hicksville type settings <laughs> like that's my shit i fucking like, love Texas that Chainsaw Massacre and yeah, stuff, like that, yeah. stuff like that just like scatty families <laughs> up to no good devil's rejects yeah kind of thing, shit yeah. like that that's like my favorite type of genre um i like gore films as well Right. But, like, not so much for, like, that's a good film. Just, like, even if it's shit, it's just, like, funny most of the time. The, <laughs> the plot is not ever good. <laughs> it's just a fucking laugh. <laughs> oh, that man's arm's gone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Heavy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a lot of blood. Oh, I wonder how much that cost to do. <laughs> Probably, like, £2.50 by Probably. the looks of most yeah, of them. It's, it's water and food. Just coming. a mass amount of food down. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm not really looking forward to the new Rob Zombie one though. Cause, yeah. I mean, the way the uh, the Devil's Rejects ended, like you would have thought that would have been it. Yeah, I was fully like, I don't know how they're gonna. Yeah. Especially because I knew it was like the same cast and it wasn't gonna be a prequel. Because yeah. obviously they've aged. It can't be a prequel <laughs> with the same cast. But I was like, how have are they, they gonna? That many yeah. Bullets? <laughs> yeah. <Spoilers>. Literally. <laughs> like, yeah. what do now? <laughs> yeah. It's hard to like assess that ending. Uh, from the devil's reject because it just leaves you questioning everything yeah you're like, mm. and then when in, you found out that he's doing another I'm like oh fuck yeah because I just Ow. accepted that that was that it, it was, was a two end, film uh, series and that was it great, yeah. and then I heard because I thought 31 was going to be to do with it and I was like oh my god how is it going to do this and I thought it would be a prequel and then it was something completely different so I'd just given up hope at that point <laughs> I was like he's not making a sequel fuck that and then it just came out of the bag, and I was like, Sick. how the hell are they going to yeah. do this? Yeah. Like, they're, they're dead. <laughs> I was, well, it's I was the same with the new tinned. Halloween. It's like, I, I, like Michael Myers burnt to death in there. Like, yeah, and was, then... Was there an exit somewhere? Just, you know yeah, I mean? he like, just, just walked out. Yeah, just walked out of the... <laughs> Emergency <yeah>. exit. <laughs> fire safety I mean, that's what he did in the original Halloween too. obviously. He yeah. just walked out of the fire. But it's just one of those, isn't it? Like, yeah. You never know. I suppose in horror it films, didn't... logic doesn't actually have to... There is a way he escapes. What? <laughs> yeah, money. Yeah. Crazy. What was your opinion on Thirty One? Did you like Thirty One? I actually did like it. Yeah. Like I liked the ending as well. That it was like an open ending. Yeah. Like me and my housemate watched like horror films quite a bit, and we watched it recently the other week, and we were talking about how it's like pretty open for the like there could be a sequel, but you don't know how it's going to end. Like obviously. Yeah. Is she dead? Who knows? Has she joined them? They're gonna go kill people together. Well, I Maybe. Thought that was a bit like, kind of like a Texas Chainsaw ending, you know, like in the original Texas yeah. Chainsaw Massacre when she's running through the field away from Leatherface. Yeah. And then on on obviously at the end of Thirty One, she kind of escapes, doesn't she? Yeah. Like, she thinks she survived, yeah. and then and she's just running there. away, thinking she survived and stuff, and then yeah, it just comes out of nowhere. Yeah. That, I got like proper Texas Chainsaw Massacre yeah. feels from that. I wish I wish I get from a lot of Rob Zombie's movies, like yeah. like The Devil's Rejects, because that is kind of. You can ke- you can tell it's very heavily influenced yeah, by yeah and like, like at the end chainsaw. of House of Thousand Corpses as well like not the very end but like where she thinks she's escaped and she gets picked up yeah and yeah. then literally just like, stuff like yeah. that and the House of Horrors obviously inside where yeah. you've got like body parts and made up mantelpieces and stuff like that it's very Texas Chainsaw yeah. Massacre which I'm like 
it's one of those like it's very risky to do something like that. Like obviously when he was making it, he must have had that in mind. Yeah, like, he must I'm have making known. this people <laughs> might might call it a Texas Chainsaw Massacre rip off, but yeah. like when you watch the movie, like completely you just you forget it. Like in a way, you forget about it, and yeah. it's his whole entire thing it in itself on yeah. its own enough to not just be like, oh well, that's been done before. I think it's because the characters are so strong as well, yeah. especially like Captain Spaulding. Like you wouldn't think a character like that would be so like popular with everyone, but yeah. yeah. There's a pot of vinyl of him, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Captain Spaulding. It's in House of the Thousand Corpses. He doesn't seem to be like an important character, yeah. just like a, a side character. And, it probably the was end. like yeah. the case where they were like. They didn't expect it to be as it's popular big, yeah. a character as it was. Yeah. Obviously, like the end, he gets like that role where it ties him in more with yeah. the family. But like after like the reception, obviously from the first film, that probably meant that Devil's they'd give him a bigger just, part yeah. in the next one and like yeah. put him more directly with Involved the family because yeah. obviously it ends up being them three. Whereas in the first film, he's just chilling in his yeah. shop. You know what I mean? Like he's eating his chicken, hanging out. But it, it kind of makes sense at the same time that he's involved because he sends him in that direction, yeah. doesn't he? And the tire gets shot out. So it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I think the um, the character right at the end was a really good one, Dr. Satan, though. Yeah. I love that character. Like, Spooky that's just really, Well, that's when the film film takes like a really weird turn. So like, yeah. it's very like, realistic and like, oh, shit, this could actually happen. There could be like a family that I could be in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. I could do stuff like this. And then it gets to the Dr. Satan yeah. and the, like... <laughs> You go into the weird corridor with all these weird like monsters and then yeah. they're like, oh, it's just yeah. I showed my my girlfriend House of a Thousand Corpses and she got up to Doctor Satan, loving it. As soon as Doctor Satan showed up, she was like, I don't like this anymore. This is a turn. And I was like, I do get that perspective because yeah. it is a, a jump from one to the other. Yeah, yeah, it goes from like being somewhat like obviously not realistic, but like Possible, in that realm yeah. to just being something completely surreal. Yeah. Now just out of nowhere yeah. as well. It just happens. It's jokes though. <laughs> it just it turns is. up. Fucking hell, I love that movie. It's same like the Halloween as well though, but I've noticed with a lot of the Halloween obviously the Halloween movies that he did, he gets a lot of original characters from other horror movies into it. So that was the yeah. way I thought obviously he's doing a complete reboot of Halloween and Halloween two. But then I bet he thought, right, there's I've gotta get this kind of like connected to like other horror films in a way and like yeah. make people want to watch it so obviously you got Daniel Harris from like Halloween like form 5 he got her back in and she was playing the main role as like I think it was Annie in Halloween yeah. and Halloween 2 and then um, he also had have you watched Dawn of the Dead? yeah yeah so uh, I think it's Peter in that um, he got him back and he was in uh, Halloween 1 and Halloween oh, 2 yeah. I think he's, yeah he's called Ken Forty. he was yeah. also Keenan Kell's dad as well Oh, was Do you remember it? that? <laughs> Which was so random. Just he was random. in all these horror movies, obviously, yeah. and that was like one like massive movie that he was in, obviously Dawn of the Dead. Yeah. Uh, he was like the main character in it, and then they brought him in as like a little cameo appearance in uh, oh, yeah. Halloween. Do you know the bit where these uh, Michael's goes to like the gas station and uh, oh, yeah, yeah, he's yeah. in the cubicle and he's like, um, I'm having a taco deluxe soup yeah. <laughs> back at me. That's yeah. why I'm going to be a while. <laughs> and then Michael Myers just kicks just it through. don't give a shit. Yeah. He's like, let me into yeah. it. <laughs> shit. You know what I mean? Little on. cheeky appearances like that. And he's actually in like quite a few of Rob Zombie's movies in like Lord of the Sail and stuff like that. So oh, yeah. I think it's cool. He's like... in, isn't he Charlie in Devil's Rejects? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah the uh, the guy who owns the... Um... Strip club. Yeah, the strip Prozzy club. Bar yeah. Thing. Yeah. yeah. So it, it's cool that he like gets like people like that and... You know what I mean? Like, yeah, like I like classic. how he like keeps the same cast in like yeah. all his films as well. Like, but obviously they're all like different characters. Yeah, I just I like it. I might be like, huh, oh, there like he his is. His own, yeah. <laughs> his own little Back universe again. he's made. Yeah. And I only like rewatching the Devil's Rejects not long back. I only recognised that the uh, guy who, uh, do you know, you just like Charlie's like second hand man. Yeah. He's like the, the bald guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the weird one. Yeah. <laughs> he's the guy from the original Hills of Eyes as well. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah, yeah isn't he? I didn't realize that. Not one back. Yeah, just made connections. I'm, I'm, I'm doing that a lot now. Like rewatching like loads of old horror films. Yeah. Like, Fuck! I was like, do you know what I mean? Just piecing it together. Yeah. It's cool though. But um, yeah, I watched the new Annabelle recently. Oh, I've not God. seen the new one. Shocking. Right. So you've not got it. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm <laughs> I've not... not heard anything <laughs> positive about it. I'm not massively into like supernatural horrors. Like, is that's not really my thing. I, I like. I'm more of a slasher person. Yeah. But. Like I really enjoy the Conjuring series. Like I thought that was a like a little bit of a breath of fresh air. Yeah. Like from paranormal, paranormal activity and yeah, all that. Yeah, I kind really of stuff. like the Conjuring. Yeah, universe. it was like a good approach to it, and I, I like it was 
strong storylines and stuff, and obviously, and then they did the Enfield like haunting, yeah, conjuring, and obviously brought the nun into that. And then I thought, well, you know what I mean? That it's good, yeah. It's but like they're bringing the nun into it now, and obviously now they're going to make a massive thing in the nun, which they've done, and then they're making a nun two, and it was like, like so the nun one, the nun one was like, all right. I thought it was shit. I yeah. did it. <laughs> it was like it, it's as cool as a character. I can't it looks remember really the freaky. film. Yeah, I was really excited for yeah. it because I was like, this character has so much potential. It, it does, but and I could not tell you one thing that happened in that yeah. film. Like, <laughs> like I've only recently got into these films, and I think I'm only in because I hate any paranormal stuff. Yeah. Um. But that was um, a ghoul. <laughs> <laughs> this place is haunted, so who knows? Which we'll go into in a minute. Um, <laughs> uh, but the thing that interested me. Yeah, hello. Yo. Hello. You okay. Sick. Sorry about that. I just shit myself. <laughs> we all Full shit stop. Off. End of story. Yeah, that's it. Done. <laughs> Um, just as I say, I hate paranormal stuff. We hear fumbling, at and the then door. a knock at the door. I don't know how much has just been recorded, but basically, Jack Valentine walked in with, with a fridge for the practice <laughs> room. It's not as scary as it should be, but there was just no answer from him, which freaked me out more. No, it's the way he knocked. Like there was a fumble at the door. <laughs> it opened. And it, it slowly opened with the creak. There was a knock on the door, and then no answer, even though we shouted him. Yeah. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, most polite ghost. Though, <laughs> yeah, not, I know, yeah, like, it's not gonna be funny. Answer. <laughs> just letting you know, I'm, I'm coming entering. to fuck shit up. So just yeah. be ready. <laughs> what I was gonna say is, I hate paranormal stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing that interested me in the Conjuring universe is that Ed and Lorraine Warren, like true in you know yeah. abbreviated commas um, events that has been reported, and that pe- re- piqued my interest. Yeah. And then when he said out looking at the nun, and I'm like, oh, it's just a, a spin off side thing. Yeah, it's like the only part of their series that isn't like based off of a true. A, yeah, well, like yeah. obviously with Annabelle, they've got the doll, the Enfield haunting. Mm. But then with this last Annabelle, they may as well have not made it. Um, it's just their it money grabbing. Well, yeah. I, watched, I watched it, and then Matt was like, oh, I'm going watching it tomorrow. I was like, I'm just going <laughs> to tell you now. Yeah. Like, just, just don't, don't even watch bother it. watching yeah. it. I was like, for anyone who's not watched it, there's going to be spoilers ahead for the next <laughs> <laughs> couple of minutes or whatever. You're not but, missing um, anything. You, yeah, you're not missing out. It's the most pointless movie you'll ever watch. Basically, it's about you know the room that Ed and Lorraine Warren have. Yeah. Souvenirs of every paranormal yeah. investigation yeah. Yeah. you've ever done. And then they have that glass cabinet where Annabelle sits in and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, just hands out. Well, basically, it's on about a girl that who babysits for the the Warrens. Yeah. And while they're away on a trip, they're babysitting obviously the Warrens' daughter. Yeah. And. Uh, the girl, well, the woman who's babysitting, um, she has a friend who obviously knows of the the, the Warrens and stuff because they're oh, like yeah. known as like they like, going around like, media yeah. what they do. Isn't yeah, it? yeah. And um, this friend just sort of invites herself round. She does. Well, that's rude bitch. for a start. Yeah. So get some manners, thanks. And basically, like, just to get to the gist of it, uh, they unlock they unlock the glass thingy that Adam L's trapped in. Uh, bring the doll out and then loads of shit starts she's, happening. She, sta- she goes in, doesn't she? Yeah. She wants to contact the dad. Yeah. Daddy issues. So no wonder she's so fucking rude. <laughs> and then um, just touches everything in that room. Yep. And That's then true. opens the Annabelle glass cabinet and then Annabelle just disappears. Just on the cake in it, really. Yeah. Chaos happens. The devil appears at one point. Oh. In person. You see the devil. In person. Which is very... That's a rare <laughs> yeah. occasion, um, Loads of shit starts happening and then... And then they put Annabelle back in the glass case, and then that's everything over and done with. Oh, <laughs> they just put it back, and yeah, that's yeah. it solved. Just, just put Annabelle powerful back Powerful glass, that in yeah. it, Christ. So the only thing that linked Annabelle, uh, that linked this story to the universe was Ed and Lorraine Warren were at the beginning, they were at the end. And the only thing you got from it is the daughter is more powerful than they will ever be. <laughs> They've beat every single ghoul and ghost in yeah. that room in the space of one night. Yeah, in this one night. Oh, is it room. based it takes place over, over one, one night? night. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's God. shocking. Yeah, it doesn't Stand sound... escapes for a night. It's just the most pointless story ever. It's like, how does this, like, like fit in with the universe? Like, yeah. we know what Annabelle does. Like, like, why have you just made a movie about her? Yeah, it'd have been... Like, opening the case. Because the investment. first Annabelle film, I thought, was, like, all right, I quite enjoyed it. The second one, I was like, mm, not great, but still, I thought they were pretty <clears> decent. Yeah. And then, after that, I think it was The Nun that came out next, wasn't it? 
Well, yeah. none has had like quite like a prominence within all the the Conjuring films. Like, yeah. instead of making it more prominent for like the later ones. Yeah. Which was like a massive build up, and like you said, like the nun character in itself was pretty creepy. I thought. Like, yeah, like especially when that, you saw the Enfield one. I was like fucking hell. Like, yeah. Upstairs when they go upstairs yeah. into the room and she's in the car now. Yeah. I know yeah. What you mean. It I was me like, out. Whoa. And when she like comes out the painting. Yeah. I was like fully. They're gonna make a film about this. I'm really excited. And then I watched it. Yeah. Maybe I just wasn't paying attention. But in my opinion, <laughs> what shit. was that about? Yeah. Yeah, I don't get it. I think something flooded at one point and yeah. there was a lot of screaming. Weird man it, it just, at one point. Yeah, it, groundskeeper it a, yeah. geezer. I don't know where he was going with it. After Russia? That. <laughs> yes. <laughs> These are the key words that are coming to me. Synonyms. Yeah, but that's all I can tell anyone about the non film. And it's even it was even more annoying, though, about it all. That. The reason they're doing an Elm Street reboot is because they're building up the Conjuring universe. I don't they're focusing on that. Instead. I don't yeah. mind that if they just did, you know, like true investigations that the Ed and Lorraine have done, rather than going, we need to bank another Annabelle film. Yeah, yeah. We need money. money, and then I'd justify it not letting a reboot happen for Nightmare on Elm Street because if they reboot it and it's not angled, it's just going to be disappointing anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Because Ed and Lorraine Warren investigated the haunting in Connecticut, didn't they? Like, yeah, this case of that film's yeah. based off. But have you heard, like, because obviously they've released books about their investigations. It's written by someone else that they've, like, dictated the story to. Right, Apparently, okay. Ed Warren said, like, oh, just, like, beef it up and make it scarier. Like, just yeah, put whatever you want in. This. I was like, like Ooh, <laughs> the ghost. <laughs> there's some like uh, YouTuber that really breaks it down the universe, and then like, um, what might be fake, and you know, because could all be fake. Who yeah. fucking knows? But <clears throat> they might just be banking on scary stories to make some money, but they're not anymore because they're yeah. dead. Well, that's one thing. Like, so if you if you stepped into that room full of stuff like in Le- Ed and L- Lorraine Warren's house, would you believe in it? Like. Would you be as superstitious to not touch anything in there, or would you be scared of opening that glass cabinet? Like, I think I would. <laughs> you'd open it. I wouldn't open it. No, oh, I'd be scared. Yeah, I'm I'd be like, yeah. I think you'd be like, just because I, just... I don't want anything to happen, I'm not gonna fuck with that. Like, do you believe yeah. in? Like, do all of you believe in ghosts? Well, I just yeah. shit myself at someone knocking on the door. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's just the belief of like you don't know, isn't it? That's what yeah, they know. Mm. Just might, not willing, not willing, willing to take the risk. Not like, willing. Not really. I'm not willing. <laughs> To take the whiz. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, know, I know they say, like, when you do, like, Ouija boards and stuff like that, like, you're apparently bringing a spirit into this other world and you, that spirit could stay with you. Like, they say, like, if you bring the wrong spirit in, like a demon or something like, like that, like you're creating that stick a, with a you. doorway, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you're opening a doorway that will be the. Yeah, because yeah. my old like, house. Like that door there. Yeah, that door. <laughs> the door here. My old house, like, I recently moved we were determined that it was haunted. Like, we had fairy lights in the room that were all battery-powered with a switch, and they always used to turn on by themselves. The kettle would come on by itself. Like, shit would be going on. It was never anything weird. Nope. But, like, it was constant, and we were like, there's ghouls here, you know? (laughs) And so one night, it was me, two of my housemates, and my mate Tom, who'd come down from Newcastle, and we were all drunk, obviously, because we're idiots. And we were like, oh, wouldn't it be funny if we do a Ouija board now? <laughs> yes, <laughs> let's go. So we're sat just in the living room. We don't have a Ouija board, so we have to make one. Oh, my God. For a House of Art students, the only pens we had were highlighters. <laughs> so we then had to go and get my colour-changing lamp, find what colour the highlighter will show up with. So it was blue lamp, yellow highlighter. Great. Nick, one of my mates, shot glasses <laughs> to use. Oh, no. uh, light a candle. <laughs> uh, cover the telly. <laughs> Don't want any ghouls coming through that. And we're like, right, let's go. So we're all just sat. It's like two, three in the morning at this point. We've just woke my housemate up to get the, the shot, shot glass. glass. Yeah. She's like, "Don't do it." Ollie, who's one of our other housemates, is going to be fucking fuming if he is about this. And we're like, "Ha ha, okay, get the shot glass. And continue <laughs> anyway." So we're sat downstairs and we start obviously asking, like, oh, is anyone here? Whatever. We're all sat with our fingers on it. And at first we're just kind of, like, not taking it seriously because obviously we're all drunk. We think it's fucking hilarious. And then, because obviously it was me, Lucy, Evie and Tom. They were the people that were there. And so it starts moving 
and we're all looking at each other and like who's fucking playing up here like, little rascal <laughs> <laughs> so we start sort of like asking it questions and we're like oh what's your name you know how old are you blah 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 is it you he's being like turning the lights on turn the kettle on and stuff and I can't remember like the exact answers I think it kept but the shot glass kept going over to Lucy one of my housemates right. and um Lucy was like oh is this and I can't remember the name now but it was her little sister who died and was like is this Jesus. I can't remember her name and it went to yes and like at that point it was like I don't know enough about her H- to sister, yeah. attempt to pretend and also that's dark <laughs> like yeah, I wouldn't do that to my friend you wouldn't do that to one another yeah and my other housemate obviously was in the same boat and Tom didn't like had met like three times obviously wouldn't know anything about that situation and like because before we asked that question like it would give us some answers but in, even so after that it would keep pointing to lucy right so we were just like shit this is <laughs> we've done something we probably shouldn't yeah we, i was like we've opened a gate <laughs> <laughs> so we were like okay you know at least we know supposedly who it is yeah. and like lucy would ask questions we were all kind of quiet at this point. We're like, this is not our place to ask the questions. Lucy can take the lead. Is this one of those moments where all of a sudden you're sobering up and going, Yeah, definitely. Oh, fuck. I was like, Oh no. Oh, <laughs> oh dear. So we were just letting Lucy ask the questions. Uh, you know, we eventually said goodbye. And we all just kind of looked at each other. It was like, Cool music. <laughs> it was like, Maybe we should go to bed now. <laughs> so we blew the candle out, put the Ouija board on the stairs down to the kitchen, the shot glass into the cupboard, and just went to bed. Next morning, woke up and we were like, We're gonna talk about what happened. <laughs> 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 we were all just kind of like, Nah. <laughs> Definitely not. Nah, we don't need to bring that up. Uh, Ollie, our housemate, was absolutely fucking raging. He was like, I Can't believe you've done a Ouija board in the house. I fucking hate you all. And <laughs> we were just like, Tee hee lol. Uh, the Ouija board remains. Okay. We might have left it in our old house, but it stayed there for the rest of time yeah. while we were there. We'd walk past it. But uh, we think our new house is haunted as well, so we're going to do another Part one. Two. You know? so yeah. That beats my next question was, would you ever do another? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do not value my own safety. Uh, <laughs> well, I don't know about you guys, but are you up for doing one here? I'll do a Ouija board. Would you do a Ouija board in here? Yeah, sure. Well the, well, the story about, so basically, where we are right, where we're recording right now is in the practice rooms that, was the, what, the, the one of the rooms that we, uh, yes, that we rent is. out. And it's within, uh, within an, is, is that an old mill or something? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's an old mill. Um, and this place is huge, like this is only a section of the building that we're in. And um, a friend of mine was telling me about stories from when they worked at one of the other units. And apparently uh, people were getting pushed down the stairs. Uh, there was even one in the massive hall where they have the ice rink. And uh, apparently, they said that they could smell like they went in once and near Christmas time and they could smell like Christmas dinner, and that oh, was the yeah. old hall where the uh, all this stuff used to go. There's um, an ice rink here. Yeah, the Wigan not ice rink, sorry, the roller rink. Just getting excited for it. <laughs> <Hockey laughs> sorry, then. I was like, let's <laughs> go. Next up, no, the roller rink. Yeah, and that's where they used to have like the cafeteria and stuff like that. And apparently, like when they went in once, it like literally smelled like Christmas dinner. Oh, shit. And uh, they said that apparently loads of people left though from getting thrown down the stairs and yeah, different I'd sorts of stuff. Yeah, I'd fucking leave too. Cool. Yeah. Took me downstairs. I'd take that. I'd yeah. Come like, out. <laughs> well, people died obviously in the cotton mills and stuff. Cause yeah. The machines and stuff. And uh, so there could be could be stuff here. That's true. We, worth doing we don't have board. anything to do a Ouija board right now. Um, Emma can bring a Ouija board. Which, from yeah. Leeds. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm going to go get it from, from Leeds. Leeds. Yeah, let's go, with the, let's go on there. Next, po- <laughs> next podcast we do with the Emma, we'll do a Ouija board. Yeah, no, that's what we'll, I mean. We'll no, I, no, I didn't mean that. I didn't mean that. podcast again with yeah. us after all. This. <laughs> after this chaos. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, I didn't mean that. Do all you right, think I meant that? Yeah, it sounded like you meant right now. No, no, I mean like at some point we should... Yeah, that would yeah, be a we'll, fun podcast. We'll get a Ouija board. Can you imagine how pissed the rest of the guys in the band and like Jack's band's going to be when they're like, you fucking haunted our <laughs> fucking practice room. Yeah, we come back and the drums are like stuck to the roof. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of my favourite uh, stories is uh, when Slipknot recorded in the Houdini mansion. Oh, oh yeah. That's supposed to be haunted and like they'd have malfunctions with gear. Random sounds would get uh, be created and no one's playing. It's weird stuff. Why wouldn't you do a fucking Ouija board? 
went to like Maroon 5 recorded there as well at one point and that um, all of them decided to like s- like stay somewhere else because they yeah, didn't want to so. stay. They all left in the only like the first night. Yeah. Really? Yeah. 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 Fucking it's in Chris and Corey Taylor's uh, book. We're like plugging his book for <laughs> <in> here. <laughs> Which um, you can get now called A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to Heaven. Yeah. Available on all <laughs> WA Smiths and Waterstones. <laughs> yeah. There is a really creepy story in that though where he was saying there was upstairs in the Houdini mansion in the room that basically there was two rooms that were split off and apparently one of them was Sean's room yeah. so you know the clone yeah. and one of them was Corey's room and you had to walk through Corey's room to get into Sean's room yeah which was which led onto like a balcony and um, apparently a um, clone came in once and he was walking through Corey's room and he said he saw someone standing over his bed like looking at him and um, obviously he went to bed and he didn't think much of it but yeah. I don't know why he won't think much of yeah, it yeah I feel like what the yeah. fuck um, <laughs> But and then there was one where he said Sean had left to go back to his family during recording and stuff, and yeah. Corey was in the, that room on his own, and he said um, he remembers going having a shower, and then he could see something. He, he was looking out the door at the same time because he heard something, and he said he saw a guy in a full tuxedo, yeah, and he was like hanging. Was it like hanging or yeah. something? And apparently, obviously, someone hung this hung this yeah. in that room and stuff. But he said Fuck he saw him. a figure there, and he said he obviously shit himself. And yeah. Then, one of my favorite ones in that book is um, a lot. A lot of the bands didn't really get on and they just do their parts, leave, go see the family when they can. Mm. And uh, the, in the mansion was just Corey Taylor and Sid Wilson, the DJ. Yeah. And um, the hearing music playing, like a music box playing from one of the rooms. And they think it's one another and it's not. And it's coming from a cupboard in one of their rooms. That's good. As soon as they open it, it stops. Ah, uh, oh, yeah, big no. Creepy stuff like that. Yeah. Has anyone like ever seen a ghost or experienced some? Well, that's what I was just about to say. I've, I've never really, I've seen things that possibly could be, but I, I haven't. It's not been fully. Do you know what I mean? Like I've, I've not seen it. Like I remember you yeah. being a dickhead in fucking high school <laughs> to this day. Oh yeah, that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> No, no, I'll, I'll tell you about like, this one. At, um, <laughs> you know Low Bank Ground? Did you ever go to Low Bank Ground when you was... Uh, don't think or so. Or Hinning House or anything like that with school? No, Imagine I don't think that. so. I went yeah. to, like, something like that, though. Yeah, you know, like... Cause I know there was one called PGL as well. Yeah. Where you go to, like, the Lady District. It's and like, you, a you, like a team building. Yeah, like a team building thing. I went and, to, like, um, Tower Wood, I think it was called, and yeah. Kingswood as well. Lots of wood. Well, the, this one was in the <laughs> Lady District right next to Coniston. Oh, yeah. water. And I remember us all having our own rooms, and each room had, like, a... Like a... Like this plaque on the door dedicated yeah. to a person or something. I don't know if they lived there or I don't know what it was, but I'm talking this was like 2006. Yeah. 2005, 2006. And um, obviously, there's all these bunk beds in the room that we were staying in. And I remember looking out the window at one point. This was after the teacher told us all to go to bed and stuff. So I was being a little um, rebel, yeah. just like looking out the window and like just was all sitting up, like having a chat and stuff. Yeah. And I remember looking out the window at one point and. Um, this horde of like sheep were like literally walking in a circle and yeah. then I saw like a figure just literally stood right in the middle of it. it yeah. Was really weird. And then I went and like obviously went in and like told some of the guys and I was like, oh my god, like what's what's going on? Like they look back and these sheep are just wandering off into different, oh, really? like, different places. But when I saw it, it was literally this figure, really faint figure, and the sheep were literally just walking in a circle around it and I was like it's one of those where like, I can't really confirm it was a ghost, like I, I don't yeah. really know what it was. But it was just weird. Well, yeah, if it was an actual person, strange. It's very weird strange. Aura that, anyway. And it was, it was quite late at night as well, so yeah. I was just a bit. Like, and it's always stuck with me as well. That like. Yeah. That just seeing that, I've, I've, it's always stuck with me, especially that story as well. Like, yeah. It's weird. I think me and you have had one. Um, it was when I first passed my driving test, and I used to just go drive anywhere with anyone who wanted to come out, and we were just driving about chatting. And it was probably like two or three in the morning. And we decided to like, oh, we'll go back, we'll chill. And uh, we go around this yeah. corner. And there is a woman stood on this corner with a child waving at cars <laughs> driving by. Uh, and she was in like the classic horror film, like white dress. White dress. Yeah. Like brown, and, like long hair and stuff. And it just, yeah. we, we drove past it quite fast. So I was like, did you just see that? And I'm like, yeah. And we're turning around. It's like, do we turn around and see if they're all right? So we do. Turn around. Um, it must have been this, like, two, three hundred yards away where we could turn around. Did. Mm. And as we drive past, 
they're not there anymore. Yeah. And I was like, mm, was maybe like, maybe someone one. picked them up. That's how I was justified. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was like, at three, at three in the morning, someone picked th- them up. And uh, I spoke to my mum like, a couple months after. One of her friends got ran over, though. And then I'm like, mm, maybe. It's just weird, though, because I remember us literally, like, just it seeing... Sounds, like, she stuck her hand out, you know, like, when you hit, when you hit yeah. and she kind of was, like, waving like, and, like, sticking her hand out, and because it was so late in the thing, yeah, like, me and Matt obviously saw it, didn't say anything to each other at first, <laughs> and it was like, did you fucking see that? Yeah. Because I, I, you just sped your care up a little bit, didn't you, as well? But then we felt bad for it after, because it was like, are they actually in trouble? It, it, yeah, anything? if it's an actual woman and a child. Yeah. and Because it's, it's in between two fields... One farmer's field, one public land, go walk about, feed some ducks. No. Nope. <laughs> might just check it out. And they were there. So fuck knows what happened. Yeah. Not unless someone picked him up in that time we was literally just turning around, but that wasn't very long time to do so. No. Yeah. Um, what was like the time frame between that? It was literally just on the road. It's, it's probably around, talking like it's about, about 300 yards yeah. away, so we're talking less than less than two minutes. Yeah. Mm, and there's no for other cars to, to like, be seen. Pull up, let them in. Get in, losers, and then yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, what about you, one of you? Not really. Do you believe in it? Mm, I think it's more of them were. I, I sort of believe in it, but then at the same time, it's like I've never seen proof of it. Just like Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Religion. It's <laughs> not real! <laughs> but, yeah, I think that's my stance on it. Like, I'd be interested in knowing yeah. if, like, or having some sort of experience like that. Um, but So that's why you're taking part in the Ouija board that we're going to do yeah, yeah, next gosh, podcast. Yeah. <laughs> I'm waiting for you to fuck up all of our electricity. My amp's going to blow and fucking <laughs> roll traps in here and burn alive or some shit. Because if you didn't Goals. believe in it, then you wouldn't be afraid of doing a Ouija board. Yeah. Thing. You know what I, I mean? think it's the fear of knowing, but also you have then the interest of wanting yeah. to know. Yeah, it's the possibility of, well, what if? Mm. But fuck it. I want to die anyway. So let's see what, what is happens. the worst that could happen? Like, if... If it's my time to go, it's my time yeah. to go. And if I go via a Ouija board, that's pretty sick. So, like, is, if, that'll if get me in the news, and all I want is some bit clout on my last moment. So, YouTuber. Yeah, I'll vlog it. My return to YouTube. Live vlog. <laughs> yeah, live vlog on YouTube. Yeah. Dead. <laughs> <laughs> the longest live stream ever because no yeah. one's there to turn it off. Oh, the police. I feel just like we've gone full circle with what we was talking about before. About the whole thing of like the serial killer, like like crime scene thing on Netflix. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this wasn't recorded. So do you no. Wanna, do you want to explain what's going on? What's this? What's your favourite Instagram? Your oh, members. so uh, so yeah, me and Emma follow this. Uh, He's got like, it's got something crazy, like 600k followers yeah, on it. Yeah, it is mental. He sells merch. Yeah, he sells merch, yeah. Well, they're called... I want some. Yeah, was it Crime Scene Cleaners, yeah. Yeah, I think it's Crime Scene Cleaners, Inc. Inc, yeah. Um, and he basically, like, it's a private account on Instagram, even though he's got, like, 600k followers, but it literally warns you, like, about it before you follow. Like, it's graphic, graphic. content. <laughs> like, this is real stuff. This isn't, like, fake. And he basically, like, he, uh, he takes photos of, like... He's he basically he's the guy who cleans up like murder scenes or like like car accidents yeah car accidents like or suicides or or even he goes to like prisons and cleans up like messes like poo all over the walls and stuff. He's yeah. basically the guy that gets called by the police or whatever to sort it Clean out. It all up. Um, and in his words, he, he's got like a hashtag saying like I'm the I'm just the janitor. Yeah, he said that one on the yeah. Um, and yeah, people are always like, oh, does it like not affect you like emotionally when you go to like the cases where it's like someone's killed their family or a suicide like does it not affect you and he's just like just the janitor <laughs> just the janitor who just yeah. cleans it up and just he just takes photos before and after yeah yeah, yeah. and he that? rates it out of 10 how difficult it is yeah. each time Fuck. Yeah. yeah but yeah he takes before and after photos which like fair play to him like he does a good yeah, job he does a really good job like <laughs> spick and span you, you wouldn't know, think that I mean? somebody's brains have been splattered all over that floor <laughs> just like polish. half an hour yeah <laughs> so he does a brilliant really job <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's a, it's pretty grim. Like, uh, showed you guys it. I don't know. It's yeah, kind of like the shock man. factor. Like, it is. Um...
Boom, there we go. Back in Back business. Guys. <laughs> Part two. Um... Part three, though. Yeah, it's Oh, shit, yeah. Well, we had to pause it, so pe yeah, people know that, but I fucked up and we can't continue recording so we're recording on a phone now enjoy <laughs> the audio quality change um we were talking about crime scene cleaners yeah uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah i was yeah. trying to remember where i yes. left off with it um, um it's like the brain stem, brain stem decomposing bodies yeah in the bed. it's pretty grim but it's like one of those where it's like shit like this it's like it's morbid fascination it's, mo it's morbid fascination yeah i mean like you said there's that netflix series as well on a thing called um how clean is your crime scene yeah, yeah. Well, there's that on there, and there's one called, um, it's about this guy, and he goes basically to, like, places of morbid curiosity. Oh, you, um, you Dark Tourist. Dark Tourist, yeah, oh, Dark Tourist. Oh, yeah. yeah. Which is, like, like something that I'd, like, I'd, I'd be like that everywhere I go. Like, I'm, I'm always, like, Yeah, trying to that find, look, like, I love that show. You know what I mean? It's so interesting. It's just weird. It's, like... Like I'm not a weird room, person, yeah. I'm just yeah. like I'm interested in this stuff. Up, <laughs> just think it's cool. Yeah. But it, but it's one of those, it just brings it like like reality back, you know what I mean? You can't yeah. like shit like this stuff really happens, like yeah. and like this is the consequence, like you know what I mean? That kind yeah, of like stuff. there is just some bloke who has to go and yeah. clean it up. Like Yeah, that's you don't what I mean. Even there's think someone that does this job. It. Like, yeah. It's you not something you think about, about is it? No. Yeah, no. you hear about it on like the news and you're like, oh shit, that's terrible. We don't think about There's literally it's people someone's... who have to just go and clean it up. Like... Someone's taking bleach to that. <laughs> <In> it? <laughs> that's mad. Someone's got a mop and bucket and they're on their right. <laughs> <laughs> beep beep. Yeah. <laughs> He's on his way. <laughs> It's just crazy, isn't it? Like, there's, there's obviously, there's someone, someone for every job, but it's just mm. weird that you wouldn't think about that, really. It's weird that someone's been that into it. They've gone, I'm going to make an uh, Instagram account for this. Well, yeah. fair play to him, though. So he's making money off that and making money off merch. Yeah. At the yeah. same time. It's a win-win. Like, yeah. And his cleaning services are bangy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's bangy. He'll be like... getting more jobs, because everyone can see he's fucking really good. <laughs> well, he, I think he must do all over the country on that, obviously, in the US. Yeah, like, he must do. But obviously there's someone over here that does it. Obviously there's, yeah. some, there's been several people yeah. in the UK that do it, but you don't obviously you don't hear about them. But yeah, it's a thing. I don't know like, who they are, but there's got to be someone in yeah. there because there's not dead bodies just getting about. And like you said, isn't the one like Casey doesn't talk about like? Yeah, so. like I think he calls it like the House of Horrors or something, and he had to sign a non-disclosure agreement like when he was going to clean it up like with the police that he can't talk about any details about like where it was who it was, like, Fucking any hell. intimate details, he can't share photos of it, because wow. I think he did at first, and then as, like, the case progressed, he had to delete them, he mm. said, like, he was like, if you looked on the internet hard enough, you probably could find them, but I'll never give anyone any hints on how to find them, Yeah. and I think it was, like, a serial killer case or something along those lines, and, like, the basement of the house was, like, a torture chamber or something, and there was, like, obviously remains in there and he was saying there was like children's remains and stuff oh, like he, it was, sounds like joseph Fritzl. yeah but he, that, he was like that's the one case i'll like never talk about and it was the worst i've ever had to deal with like clean up wise and case wise that's, that's mental. crazy isn't it? obviously that there's so much stuff that he does and cleans up and Obviously, he just tries to like see past it, don't he? Yeah, but obviously, like, like he must get like something must affect him that way. Yeah, because he's got a family. Like yeah. he's like spoke about it because like he said like he's got like a wife and kids and stuff, so he can't let it play on his mind because mm. it'd affect. But if he does anything to though, that wife and kids, he can get rid of them no problem. Yeah, <laughs> <Spitting sides. laughs> let's be honest, that's the Fucking perfect armor. murderer. Yeah. A I cleaner. Might a, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I might be a new serial killer show. <laughs> How clean is your murder? <laughs> right. Getting in the way with polish. I don't know why Bee Gees, Bee Gees just popped in my head like, How clean is your kill? <laughs> is your kill? How clean is your kill? That's <laughs> <laughs> fucked up. Oh I love God. that song. Yep. <laughs> Timeless. 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 Timeless classics. <laughs> Welcome I to love Smooth FM. <laughs> you were listening to it on the way. <laughs> Here's Literal the murder ballads. <laughs> Here's the first That's my favourite hour songs. on Smooth FM, murder ballads. <laughs> murder ballads from six till seven. <laughs> oh Straight after gosh. drive time radio. <laughs> 
How's your drive? Here's some murder classics for you. <laughs> While you're cleaning that murder scene, here's a bit of music to go along with it. I'm going to start off with Luther Vandross. Oh. <laughs> Fucking oh, hell. God. That's some purge shit, that. <laughs> that is some purge shit, that. That's, that's the what the radio has on the day after the purge. Fucking hell. Why don't you Bill Wimbers. <laughs> yeah. right. So, changing from all this murder, <laughs> do you have any pet peeves in general that piss you off more than anything ever? Slow walkers. Oh my god, I cannot point to words how much I want to batter people who walk slow. It drives me up the wall because I walk so fast. Like, my legs are so long, they go fast. <laughs> I'm trying to get to places in the smallest amount of time possible. I don't like dilly dallying. Get me to where I need to be. Done. So, people who walk slow and people who just stop. Like in the middle of a pavement. Oh, don't. That don't like move yeah. to the side or have any indication that they're gonna stop. They just stop dead. And you're just there, like, oh shit. I like, hate that. I, mm, it drives me up the wall. <laughs> and they don't even like acknowledge that oh, sorry. about 10 people have just nearly collided. <laughs> they're just there, people not religion. asked. And I'm like, sir, I've just nearly battered <laughs> you. <laughs> I could have fell on my ass and I would have. I'm so clumsy. Like, it just drives me up the wall, like, I hate it. Do you just want them people who want to to get to somewhere like Jason Bourne, like you full-on like, full bomb it? Oh, yeah, I'm... So I'm pretty much the same. Breaking into a sprint the if I can. <laughs> like, I, kinda, I know you're, like, really fast when you're walking, Lord, and that, but I'm the same, like, every time I'm walking with someone, they're like, why are you, why are you walking so fast? I'm like, I just naturally do this yeah. now. Like, I'm not doing it on it. purpose. All it's my like... friends are, like, 5'2 as well. Yeah. So I'm, like, 8 inches taller than them. My legs just go further than theirs do. It's just those lanky fuckers in it. Yeah. Like, yeah. No one gets pissed off at anything, people then. Yeah. <laughs> They're just left in dust. I'm like, right, I'll meet you there because I can't, I can't walk at their speed. I have yeah. to take such inconveniently small steps. It's in city centres, isn't it, more than anything? Yeah. Like, when you have, you literally have nowhere else to walk in a pavement. Yeah, and you have to there, keep and you get stuck your behind pace. loads of different people. And yeah. then you have to walk in the bike lane to get around them. And then the bikes come. And then the bikes come, yeah. <laughs> And then you're just like a fucking flying giraffe, like being between, like being tossed between yeah. like people traffic and bike traffic and fritters <laughs> in between. You know, it feels like Formula One though, because you're having to overtake people. It's like you're going round on the yeah. pavement, and then you have to think in advance of where you can yeah. go to position yourself and get, get more ahead and be like where you are. I always like have my headphones in when I'm like walking on my own though, so I forget that if it sounds quiet to me, it's not quiet to everyone around me. And it's always the case that someone will like stop or be walking slow and I'm getting in a huff and I'm like, oh, fuck off. Or so just, <laughs> this guy proper aggy and I think I've muttered it under my breath. You know, they might have heard me mutter something, but they won't know what I've said. Yeah. Turns out I've just said it at full volume as if I was speaking <laughs> to them. And they just look at me and I'm like, right. I'm, but I'm already speed walking, so I'm long gone. I'm like, I see their head turn and I'm like, nope. But okay. I always do it. I hate it. I need to stop. <laughs> but they should stop. Why should we stop? Yeah. They should stop. They're doing Sorry. wrong. I'm just expressing my inconvenience. <laughs> they should be lanes. That's the new thing now. Full by lanes. <laughs> people lanes. Yeah, people lanes. <laughs> Strollers, the average walker, speed walkers. <laughs> Bikes. Yeah. And scooters. <laughs> you sent Bolt. <laughs> <laughs> should be different degrees on what we should do. That's where it should be. All the people that are running for buzzies. Yeah. Yes. I love watching people running for buzzies though. Same. Or trains. I just refuse to. Or, or trains. I like, will just get the next bus. I'm not that's running. That's what I'm I've had, a, I've had a quite a few times where I've looked like the fool, where I've run after the buzz, and I've got gone. there in time, they've shut the doors yeah. and gone, and then you act as though, like, you kind of do the thing where like you run towards the buzz, you try to get on it, it shuts, it and drives you, off, and you, you, don't, you look away as if like, yeah, you I, turn I, I wasn't getting that buzz time anyway. Table, like, <laughs> like look at a different number. Yeah, like. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I've done that a lot of times. So like you said, no, if yeah. if, uh, if I'm walking there now and I can see it's probably just about to take off, I just I don't even yeah, bother. I'm just getting the I'll just, yeah, I'll I'll just, just go the offie and have yeah. a look around for a bit. Like, yeah. Yeah, like I, don't, I just don't want to be that guy who yeah. everyone watches and he's like, ah. Especially <laughs> when you know the bus is full. Yeah, exactly. And you know yeah. you're gonna get so close and the driver's just gonna fuck off. I'm pretty sure they're doing it on purpose. Though, oh, so definitely. I think they do, yeah. Because like, oh, they're oh, never in a good mood. Yeah, they're miserable. Oh, they're miserable. Oh, they're miserable. Oh, they're miserable. Oh, they're miserable. But, oh, sick. I'm, trying, I'm, trying to say something. I'm terrible today. My mind's gone. I'm lacking coffee. 
Um, yeah, the best example of you not running was when you fucked up the train times when we were going watching Guns N' Roses to London. I can't remember this. What? So, you read the, the what time it got to the other station yeah. as the time it was arriving at the station we needed to be at. So we're like three quarters of the way to walk into Bryn train station. You go, oh, our train's already gone. I was like, do you mean it's already <laughs> oh, gone? Oh shit, no, this was to get our train to London, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. So like we paid, oh. prepaid for these train tickets and we need to be in Wigan for a certain time. Because you know how much train tickets to London are from yeah, like Wigan. this sums you up this. So we booked it for like, say like quarter past nine and we timed it where like, all right, if we get the train from Bryn to Wigan, it only takes like five, 10 minutes. So we'll get the 50 something train, the 850 something, <laughs> and we'll get there just in time to walk up to the train station and have a swift, like, easy time going to the platform. We'll get on the train and then we're sorted. Right, it's all going to be good. But. It's all gravy. <laughs> but it doesn't go that yeah. way. So I, I'm there sprinting back to the car to then drive us to Wigan, and you're like, oh, I can't be bothered running. So I have to sprint <laughs> to the car, chuck my shit in. Yeah. Speed round the corner. Yeah, no, we, we literally walked. It's a 20 minute walk to the, to the train station from my house to yeah. the train station. Yeah. And we get halfway there until I realise I've fucked up the times. Oh. In which Matt <laughs> turns to me and goes, Mate, we've got 15 minutes to get to Wigan to get on this train. Oh, so we've lost out on like 100 and something quid. Fuck I was like, yeah. shit. So we started running and then I'm like, I can't be out running. <laughs> I'm not going to energy. So Matt's bolting it fucking. <laughs> Down this main road. With like all my like yeah. clothes and everything for like the Jesus next three or Christ. four days. Just like in a hold all. And I had my leather jacket on, it was like 20 something degrees. <laughs> and I'm still sprinting it. Like in my fitness craze, I was the point. <laughs> I was like, I can do this. Yeah, so you like jump in, don't you? And then obviously, like, you kind of like pick me up. <laughs> no, like, like, the worst bit was, was, you walked to where the car was. And I tried getting you because oh you decided to have a little sprint. Yeah. And I was like, hurry the fuck up! <laughs> <laughs> Did you pay for parking for the next three days? Yeah. yeah we had to do oh that, my yeah. God. So we got there, literally, right? So, the, so, so like I said, say if it was due at like quarter past nine, it was something like that. Anyway, it was delayed, weren't it? it? Well, we got there and we perked up on like, and there was literally all the spaces at the bottom of this car park were full as well. Yeah. So we had to go up to like the fucking third level. And we perked up and it was like, right, mate, we've got three minutes to get this train. So we perked okay. up. Sort the ticket out. We went down, it was quarter past. I was like, mate, we fucking missed it. We've missed it. And then we went inside and it said delayed. I was like, thank God. <laughs> we, we made it. Like, oh so we found, I know we've been delayed. This is the only time I'll actually like be happy with Northern Rail. Was it Northern Rail? No, it was Virgin. Virgin. But you know what I mean? In general, yeah. trains being delayed yeah. actually like worked to our advantage for once. Um, it's the only time yeah. it will ever be that way. But well. honestly, that was like. I mean, I saw was tri- like, like twitching like a rabbit's nose <laughs> like, all the way there because I was like, oh. I think I thought I was driving us. It was like the countdown theme was playing in the background for us. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> like Mission been Impossible in my, fi- my Skoda yeah. Fabio. Like, <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Absolute nightmare. And it felt like every red light we could have gone through. <laughs> fucking, like, yeah, turn. everything. Just like. Yeah, just was trying to stop us from getting that train. <laughs> That was the worst. Oh. I mean, I had to pay like what, thirty-five quid in parking. Oh yeah. god! Wow. Imagine how much you would have had to pay for trains though, if you'd Dumb. missed it. Dumb. On the day, prices. <laughs> well, losing a So how did you? How can you miss the train? Well, uh, <laughs> Matty can't read. <laughs> uh, we got the wrong time. Oh yeah, you're not gonna refund. Oh, fuck. <laughs> but yeah, um, have you got anything you want to plug, or yeah. do you want to plug your socials? Uh, yeah, because Emma's really going to gain from our following. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Let's be honest here. <laughs> um, everything that I have social media-wise is just under Emmy Campbell. If you search that, it's just the one that looks like a goth. That's, Go follow that's the, the goth, profile. Emmy Campbell. Yeah. <laughs> follow the goth. Follow the goth. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag follow the goth. And what about the app? The app. Uh, hopefully it'll get done soon. I need to save money. Yeah, but you'll but be announcing it'll that be, on your socials yeah. and stuff. Yeah, if it's gonna be announced anywhere, it'll just be on all my social media. Probably like Twitter and Instagram would be yeah. the main ones for We'd updates on that anyway. sort of stuff. Yeah, so yeah. For sick. Fuck out of it. We'll definitely check out the covers on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. And next podcast we'll do, we'll do a Ouija with you. Yeah, get spooky. Hopefully, yeah. Yeah. We'll do like get a group spooky. podcast of like different people. Like we can like kind of like podcast with and shit at the same yeah. time. The Hopefully. ultimate. Would it work though, right? Would it blend? Will it, will it blend? <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, no, would it work though? Like actually, like like doing a podcast, but then doing a Ouija ball at the same time. Do you think it'll work, or do you think the ghosts will be like, "Nah, fuck you"? <laughs> um, it depends the if it's like attention hungry. <laughs> like some depends ghouls probably it. want the attention. Depends on the Please dies. get me on Instagram. Yeah. Oh my god, please. <laughs> Solo wanted the fame. <laughs> they didn't get their after death clout, so they're still chasing yeah, yeah. it now. They're probably listening in That's right now. Thinking, ghost. They're like, like yes. <laughs> Two likes, fuck yeah. Fucking yes. <laughs> Finally on Spotify. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for doing this. No Cheers for coming worries. on. Thank you. Trips to Wigan completed. Oi, oi. <laughs> no one wants to do that. <laughs> that was episode 12 with Emma Campbell. I really enjoyed that conversation. Hope you did too. Don't forget you can follow Emma on all of the social media at Emmy Campbell. And don't forget, you can also follow us on all of our socials at An Earful Podcast. You can listen back to previous episodes via Acast, Anchor, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many, many more. So if you like it, tell your, your friends. If you don't like it, tell people you don't like. But either way, spread the word. And don't worry, guys. We'll, we'll keep you updated with the Ouija board. If we can make this happen, we'll make it a very special episode. Obviously, we can't record it whilst we're doing the Ouija board. Because then... Why not? I mean, we don't know. Like, just boom a mic over it. Everyone will like that. How do we know how the ghosts feel about that? Fuck the ghosts. <laughs> anyway, we'll see what happens with that. But stay tuned because the next episode, numero 13. Yeah, I don't know that yeah, one. We're not, doing no, that we're, not doing we're not doing that oh, again. No. Uh, it's going to be a big one, guys. So, uh, yeah, stay tuned. Thanks. See you next time.